Folks, welcome back. Oh my God, it's happening again. Season 11 has premiered. It is out into the world. What do we think? Uh, I am coming to you on Tuesday night, January 30th, and we are going to, we're, hey, buckle in, folks. We, we're back. None of us have healed or grown or any of that good stuff, and we're going to talk all about this episode and because numb nuts did, now we have to talk about the Viali Fialis, the Vial, the 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 bio files, because Tom Sandoval and Tom Schwartz went on that podcast and completely obliterated any goodwill that this man had built up in in the small amount of time. Oh my God! But we have to talk about that if we're going to talk about this season. Um, I I'm 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 sure I listened to a whole episode of the, the Viali Fialis. And uh, we're going to talk all about that. So buckle in. This will probably be two parts. We'll do the recap. We'll talk about the bio files. Talk about watch what happens live tonight. Talk about where everybody is. But how? How? Where, where's everybody out there? How are you guys doing? I, I can't wait to hear what you thought of this episode. And with anything, you got to temper your expectations, especially in the beginning. So this is kind of like that first day back at school. Everybody's like, "Hey, nice haircut. Oh, look how you've changed. Or look how you have not changed." And we are put right back in that in episode one called Notes on a Scandal. <laughs> Notes on a Scandal. Oh, you guys, it's just so dark. It's so dark. Ken, what do you have to say about this? I can't believe what? that Tom Zandero had Raquel, uh, oh, Raquel when Ariana's away. I know. In the uh, jacuzzi I as know. well. What? And know, she stayed all night. Yeah? I know. Are you lying? I know. That. Are you spreading rumors? My Poor Ken only got one little moment in tonight's episode. And I swear to God, his moment, they like slowed it down because he was like walking at Tom Tom. It was like, I can't believe I'm still walking around Tom Tom with a dog in the crook of my arm. I can't believe that. And Lisa, how dare you, Lisa? Like that man is a star and you keep him from us? Are you that threatened by Ken Todd that you can't let him have a couple of lines in the first episode? We are craving a little Ken Todd. Like, I just want him to pop up everywhere. He can do his line. He can do it. I can't believe Ariana says so, so after what happened with Tom Sandler on the sexes. I can't believe that. I mean, come on. No, you've got to understand. It's not about Ken. It's about me and Tom Tom and this beautiful structure by Nick Elaine. Oh, Nick. Lane. <laughs> Guys, I'm just warming up, man. I'm trying to see if I, can, if I still have the passion for talking about this. And I think I do. I think I do. I've watched this episode like four or five times and it just gets better every time. Guys, it just gets better. I really wish that vile file. Like, okay, so, so Tom Schwartz and Tom Sandoval did the vile files. Now, everybody should know. And they say in the podcast, this that 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 podcast was recorded even before the Emmys. Tom had just gotten back from uh, Asia, where he'd taken that picture with the tiger or the the, the leopard. They got everybody upset, um, and so this was recorded a couple of weeks ago. And my curiosity, just as somebody that actually does podcasting too, is that did 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 Tom leave that day and been like, "Yo, dude, I was thinking about it," and um. I think that didn't go well. And maybe like, could you like, could you like a redo or something like that? And it's kind of brilliant. I mean, it's, not, it's brilliant to release on the day of the premiere, but man, I just, I, I almost, I mean, I almost felt bad for Tom. I, I, I finally got there. I find, and, and Nick uh, says in the podcast many times, he's like, Hey man, I want the best for you. I want, I want, I just don't want, I, I want you to have a good life. And I have to say just right up top, I do want Tom Sandoval to get back on track. Um, I do really hope the best for him. Uh, but it, it was kind of sad because it was almost like this glimpse in the future. They've already finished filming the season. If that's where he's at right now, he has not gotten there yet. And of course, I mean, the other conventional wisdom would say, yeah, why would he have gotten there yet? It is still so, so I mean, remember this, this all broke last February, right? And then I was looking into some of the, the dates for, for this because I was like, okay, when did the reunions air? And the reunions started airing on May 24th. 
and then they finished on June 7th. So I'm not a mathematician. We got June, uh, July, August, what comes out of September. So that's four months, five months, six, seven. So we're like seven and a half months since the last reunion aired. And they filmed the reunion in, in the end of March, I believe. So it is wild. And like I've, I've kind of talked about in the other podcasts that I've done when we've lightly talked about Vanderpump is that you know, the cast obviously has moved so much further away from these events than the audience have. Like we're catching up to why they are like, you know, where their relationships are now. We're going to be able to see like we know Sheena is OK with Tom. We know Lala is sort of OK with Tom at this point, but we don't know how they got there. And that's going to be kind of what's interesting for us potentially is we're going to be able to piece that together like a puzzle and go, OK, I see how this connects with this. But then it's almost like that that podcast today just kind of hits you in the nuts going like, oh man, Sandoval, if anything, came off angrier than I've ever heard him. And it bummed it. I I really, there's no joke here. It it really did bum me out because I was like, my God, it seems like he's getting more ensconced in blaming Ariana in certain ways. And he kept talking about Ariana in certain ways. I'm like, oh dude, she got to stop being so petty, dude. And I don't know, other than the house, I feel like she's moved on. I don't hear her talking about Tom a lot. You know, I mean, it gets brought up a lot, obviously, but I mean, she just premiered on Broadway on Monday in Chicago. She uh, And I just felt like Tom, whoever's advising you, I don't know if it's Schwartz. I don't know. Like, I, I think even Nick tried to give him a lifeline a, a, a bunch of times during that interview. And he just wouldn't take it. He just wouldn't take it. And I feel like that's such a masculine male. Uh, I was about to say quality, but it's not a quality. It's like what we do as a disservice to our, like it's, it's, it's stubbornness and bullheaded where it just gets in your way entirely. Like I almost thought, or I almost, there was a part of me that was hoping, by the way, how do you show up late to a podcast? He shows up 40 minutes late. I mean, dude, then they call him. He's like, Oh dude, what's up? Okay. Yeah. I'm coming over, dude. And, you know, he gives us his reasons, which, you know, seem credible, you know, uh, mourning the loss of one of his best friends uh, that passed away, uh, you know, I think six months ago or something. And I, I completely get that and understand that. But then he also had said, I think he was with somebody the night before. Like, it sounded like he was with a woman potentially as well. Um, all of that. But then just don't do the podcast. Don't go in. And I thought, man, I mean, it would have made him look like a momentary jerk for not coming in. But I think overall, it potentially just. Ah, and it's not like I, I want him to win, but I do want him to be happy somewhere down the line. But I think with the happiness, it has to come with some kind of essential understanding that what he did was beyond defense and almost like chalking it up to, I don't know, man, being a human is wild. Being a dude is fucked up. We do not think right. Sometimes I was complete, like there was none of that. And then you just got this anger still, and it just reignited some of my anger. And I think some of the audience's anger, because you do think about, you know, 11 seasons of this show now, and you're right. Everybody's cheated on everybody. And we've also are always gone over the difference with everybody is that we thought Sandoval and Ariana, they were different. We thought they were this not magical couple, but they thought, you know, Oh man, that is a unit. We saw Schwartz, he would get, you know, loaded in Cabo and, you know, go make out with some random chick and blame it on the booze. DJ James Kennedy cheated on, it seems like, everybody he has been with besides Ali. Jax, we've had, uh, you know, seasons of Jax cheating, all of these things. But Tom was a little different. But then even when you start to come down, uh, come back down to earth in regards to season 10, you're like, okay, okay, well, let's let's see where we go. But then to hear that he still is in that same exact, like where I felt he was angrier now. And it was also something that led me to believe or think that, you know, sometimes the the companions we have in this life, they are, or they can be sometimes our grounding force. And I don't mean just men. And I mean, like, you know, uh, men can be that to women, women can be that to men, but it almost seemed like, oh man, like, Ariana potentially really was that grounding force for Tom or that guy that kept him at least somewhat on the ground. And if he doesn't have that, it just seems like he might just be this mess of emotions. And I was shocked in the interview for him to say that he was in therapy now. And I was like, oh my God, because I mean, it's a rock and a hard place. Sure. But 
Because you have to talk about Raquel, like I mean Rachel, aka the artist formerly known as Raquel, in this mess as well. Because and also just the the blowing up of everybody having a podcast. So you you would have to edit everybody. Like you could do a, like a season eleven of Vanderpump Rules where you just edit in Rachel's podcast audio. You could add in, uh, I guess, Tom's podcast, Nick's podcast. You could throw in my podcast for some stupid joke. You could edit like a master season 11 where everybody's involved and you get a full 360 story of everything from all sides. Oh, my God. I can't do it. If anybody wants to volunteer to do that, I think it's a great idea. But um, you have to think then. Rachel, like I said, you know, she had, I don't know if we want to call it the luxury, but she was brave enough to go and put herself into like intensive therapy for months. And somebody said, oh, well, Tom, you know, Tom has to provide. And I'm like, well, sometimes you have to make tough decisions and sometimes you have to let go of your house and sometimes you have to let go of certain things so you can give yourself the best possible chance of survival long term and not trying to live like a baller in the short term. And it also goes to show you that sometimes we prioritize creature comforts. I do this as well. I think probably a lot of you guys have done that at times where we're like, well, this makes me feel good. This is my, you know, and as we get older, we need more and more of that because it's just really hard to live through this life sometimes. But, you know, Rachel went and did this. Tom is, I mean, how can you be in therapy, but then also constantly put yourself out there for people to criticize? Cause that's part of reality. You are allegedly showing your quote unquote life. And then us, the audience, because it depends on us, the audience and reality shows are that kind of fine, unique diamond that depends on us talking about it. That depends on the fever that is created by us commenting on what they do. And I just don't know how you go in there. And at this point, like at this point, I was even like, yeah, man, it's cool that you're being honest with your real feelings, but could you dial it back at least just a little bit to give yourself a fighting chance out there? out there in the Reddit threads, the comments, all of this stuff, because it just, it, it, it was at a point, you guys, that I listened to that I was like, wait a sec, is this a bit? Like, did they do this to drive clicks and downloads? Because I was like, there was no, at first I just didn't believe it. I was like, this is way too contentious for this to be true, for this to actually be the way he is going in there behaving, acting, talking. And then Schwartz was like, oh man, Tom, no, he's a good guy. Like Schwartz was trying to be the Sandoval whisperer, but the, the, the guy can't even speak English himself. Poor, you know, I was like, poor guy. So we, it's weird though. It's like one of the first times that I see the charm of those two guys almost like wearing off to like a, a like a thin nub. You're just like, oh man, like the, your greatest hits aren't even really playing like they used to. And Schwartz, you know, Schwartz gets by on charisma so much. He's so funny, so charismatic, a nice guy. And that's what I also want to point out. Like, I, you know, these guys, if you met him at like a bar, I was about to say a dark alley. If you met him at a bar, you probably have the time of your life with them. They are, they are so nice, so willing, so friendly. But at the same time, it's one of those things of like, okay, but do they make the right decisions at the right time? And then even if they don't make those right decisions, do they realize the poor decisions they made and take accountability and responsibility for those poor decisions? And that's the thing that I just kept, I just kept, I was shocked because I was like, man, if anything, when the world kicks you in the nuts because of something you did and you are past six months of this thing happening and you still are at this place, I got really scared. It, it, it became not funny. Like I was almost tuning into that thing and, oh, this will be like a really funny kind of, like it'll be, we'll be able to make fun of it. But it, I just felt like a darkness the whole, I was like, oh God, how did this, like, my God, how did they think this was okay to release? I mean, I know from Nick's side, of course you want this release, but I just thought how he didn't stop and think, I mean, it. <laughs> first off, this podcast made Howie Mandel's podcast with Tom. I mean, it, 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 you know, it made it look like it was up for a Pulitzer. I mean, it was just so different, but it was the same kind of stubborn indignate, indignate, indignation, indignation that we are now used to seeing with Tom. And it didn't used to be that way. We see so many flashbacks in last night's episode of Tom and Ariana in the past. And I remember each of those moments being like, oh, oh, like I remember going, oh, so cute. Oh, they love each other so much. And then to see it now, and it's just so different. And, you know, there is that also that thing is like, it, it still is too soon for Tom to 
have really maybe taken in what he's done, especially when he's put himself out there in the public eye. He's not taken any sort of break going from his tour to uh, the Fox show Special Forces, to filming Vanderpump Rules, to back on tour, to going to BravoCon. I mean, this guy has not rested to actually be able to even hear his own thoughts. But when I hear this guy bitching about a cake with Sandoval as a liar being a breaking point, I'm like, dude, man the fuck up. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Do you know that they were probably requested to put that on a cake? Do you know that that was actually something that we all kind of like commiserated and joked about? And like, like if for the audience, we were like so invested, but for you to personalize a cake when you should be personalizing your own behavior, that was like so weird to me. And it was a bummer. Cause I'm like, dude, the cake thing, that's your, that's the hill you're going to die on is they put Sandoval as a liar on a fucking strawberry shortcake. Come on, man. Like, I was really thinking like, oh, you know what? Oh, I was just so down. It was just like such a bad day. And I got this and I freaked out. And then now in retrospect, I realize how that silly is that that I'm mad at a cake uh, or a cake business. Like, uh, I'm not mad at that. I'm just mad that I did something stupid, started this whole thing. But instead we got, dude, she, she fucking tucked down to me so much, dude. You don't even know, dude. I was a shell of a man, dude. Okay, and for all those people out there, I know there's a lot of Tom apologists, and that's great. I, I know he has tons of fans still. That's good, right? He does need that that support. And I also want to say, as we go into this season, um, let's be gentle with each other. Uh, in a sense, these are, you know, I'm going to do voices that I find silly. If that's not your thing, I totally get it. Don't listen. I, I And I mean that with peace and love and kindness. Um, and also these are just my thoughts, my opinions, how I see this show. I think I'm right a lot of the times, but even if I'm not, this is just my stuff. It's just a podcast. Um, and there's so many good ones out there right now. Oh my God. I mean, think about how many podcasts have sprung up in the wake of Sandoval. I mean, we got Jack's back and we got a slew of podcasts that have been born out of Scandoval. So, I mean, that's what you should be mad at Sandoval about. And by the way, Sandoval should be just mad at podcasts, not cakes. My God. Um, okay. So that's like our opening shot. That's the opening statement. If you like this show, uh, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you tell your friends, tell your family, tell your loved ones. You know, if there's a, a family hearth or a family dining room table, you go, hey, you know, after family prayer, hey, I'd like to suggest a podcast for everybody. Or maybe we could actually listen together as a family and it can kind of uh, bring us back together. <laughs> <laughs> because we hate each other. Uh, consider, consider keeping to listen, keep listening to this one. Give it five stars on Apple podcasts and Spotify. We're doing a Q and a episode over on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash. So bad. It's good towards the end of the week. So if you have any questions about this recap or Vanderpump rules in general, or anything head on over there for a couple bucks a month, you get access to like God, 400 podcasts and a bunch of goofy stuff that we do on a, uh, a it seems like a weekly basis. So, okay. I think that's all the commercials. Okay. Okay, checking back in with you guys. You guys are good? Man, I was thinking, it, it doesn't it feel like, though, season 10, especially once that Scandal hit, it, we were just in it. I mean, I, I speak for myself, but we all were in it. We were kind of in it together. It was like in the trenches. We were finding out new shit left and right. You know, I'm, so many bad memes I made, so many like goofy little thoughts, so many. I mean, it was just week after week. And that's why I always say temper your expectations with this, because the producers of this have a really tough job, because how do you compete with something that they hadn't planned on? And yes, all you, you know, uh, Vianon, that's Vanderpump Rules QAnon, you Vianon people out there, this actually really was a real thing that happened. It was not plotted or scripted or any of that stuff. So how do you, how do you then piece this together even from a production standpoint? And how do you tell everybody's story, including Tom Sandoval, and try to be fair, but also try to pick out those moments that they think are going to work, that they think are going to be classic Vanderpump? And this thing is so popular. It was a ratings juggernaut. And now we have spinoffs like The Valley with Jack Taylor coming in March. We have all of these things. How do you how do you make sure this isn't a giant flop? Well, you go to characters. You go to what's actually happening. You try to tell the truth of that situation. And the 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 biggest thing I found fascinating about this episode is that they still thought Rachel Rachella, they still thought Rachel was coming back. They thought at this moment, the cast didn't know that she wasn't coming back production. And if you listen to Rachel goes rogue, she does talk about it. it was still on. It was still a plan to potentially come back. She had not written this show off yet. 
So there was a lot of forward momentum potentially of this. And that's why you see Lala make a very, I don't know, it was like a brave decision, but I, or I mean, I thought it was very storyline forward for Lala in particular to be like, well, you know what? All that shit I talked about, Rachel, I might be willing to have a conversation with her. It's almost like job security that she was willing to do that in the back of the Tom Tom alleyway, which by the way, let's say, hey, hey, Tom Tom alleyway, fuck you. You will never be the Sir Alleyway. That at that Tom Tom Alleyway, it seemed like it seemed like you you know remember in the nineteen eighty nine Batman movie with Michael Keaton, it's like a nuclear power plant, and Jack Nicholson falls into a vat of chemicals. It looked like a nuclear power plant. It looked like a really uh, really cold, not the warm, inviting uh, nature that we see over the Sir Alleyway with the dumpsters. It just looked cold and mechanical, and I was just like, oh my god, are they like just making cement here? It was ve- I do not like the Tom Tom Alleyway. You got a lot of work to do, Tom Tom Alleyway. Because I was not liking that scene where Lala comes out and and leaves a voice note for Rachel. No, 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 not not on my watch. You send Lala down to the Sur alleyway if you're going to be outside, because it is just literally around the corner. I don't think that is a tough walk for the camera guys or Lala. Go, hey, you're you're gonna leave a voice note for Rachel. Let's walk. Let's walk two blocks, okay? Oh, and also uh, before we start the recap. I am on Kate Casey's Reality Life with Kate Casey talking a little bit about the premiere. I think it's probably like a 20-minute segment, so go check out Kate Casey's excellent podcast. I'm also, Amy Phillips has a podcast, Drama Darling, and I'm on a Patreon-only episode, and I got to tell you, I think it was like an hour and 15 minutes, and it was such a fun interview that ended up going in a bunch of crazy directions. Amy Phillips is so, so damn talented. Uh, it was just such a such a joy to talk to her, and I will be on Up and Adam Live at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on his YouTube channel. Um, I guess you know when you're listening to this, I'll, I'll be over there on YouTube if you want to join in on the conversation over there. And I wanted to say um, just at the top, uh, you know, so weird uh, covering this show because a lot of me covering this show last season really. Um, really involved my mom in a lot of ways. I know, don't roll your eyes. Oh, he's talking about his mom again. But I did want to say that is that uh, through the entirety of season 10, we were uh, dealing with my mom uh, being really sick. And there were so many times that I was in Arizona where I would watch these episodes and the Watch What Happens Live uh, episode uh, where Schwartz talks about it in this episode where it was just a flaming pile of shit where he was like, oh, if anybody sees Tom, why don't you go up and give him a little hug? Which we should. We shouldn't be suggesting physical contact with Tom right now. Um, but I, I, I remember my mom, uh, you know, making her watch that watch what happens. I watched it one time. I was like, mom, you got to see this. You got to see this. And she was like, oh, he's crazy. But my mom always had a soft spot for uh, Tom Schwartz. Uh, he took a, a picture with my mom like six years ago at Tom. He was hammered, but so nice. Took a picture and my mom had a little crush on Tom Schwartz, which I think a lot of people out there do. And that's the thing. We can feel bad for these people, but everybody, I think genuinely, you know, you still, I don't know. I, I, I hope that they, everybody can pull their shit together. I mean, you see how strong these women are. I mean, Ariana and Katie, I mean, they seem to like have gotten their shit fully together. And it's like sometimes dropping dead weight. And it doesn't mean they're dead weight forever for everybody. But for them, being able to drop these things or having them dropped for them um, ha- has kind of made their life in certain ways so much better. I mean, Lala is still dealing with Randall shit, but she's on her way. It's got a hit podcast, all of this. I mean, like the Sheena is doing her Sheena thing, which we'll get to summer moon in a second. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I thought that was interesting, but also just uh shout out to my mom. I, I've been thinking about her a lot. And I think that was part of the, trepidation or kind of like a little bit of a bad feeling about covering this just because it was so, and I mean, I was, I was losing my mind through all that, the mom stuff. And I know I took out a lot on these recaps, uh, cause it was just, it was wild. It was nuts. You guys watching all that happen. And, uh, I will be bummed because I will not be able to watch with her or talk about it with her where she would just roll her eyes or shake her head or make her watch an episode and have her come on. But I will say this is how amazing my dad, Bill Bailey is, was that uh, my dad now follows my social media. He's trying, he's trying, right? Uh, Which I feel bad about, but he texts me today and he goes, what's VPR? Because I had posted something about VPR returns tonight. And I was like, Vanderpump rules, exclamation point. And then he was like, duh, thanks. 
And then I posted it and he was like, just saw your post. Good one. Cause I made fun of him in it. But I, I, uh, you know, I, I love that my dad is trying and, uh, you know, my dad is potentially going to get into the sickness that is VPR Vanderpump rules. So shout out to Becky Bailey, wherever you are. I hope they have the Peacock extended edition in heaven for you to. Okay. Season 11, episode one notes on a scandal. Uh, shout out for them not saying notes on a scandal ball. Um, so this is the description the cable company gives us. Ariana puts on a brave face and attempts to rebuild her life after Tom's infidelity. Attempts to make her own coffee after Tom's infidelity. Tom Schwartz tries to make peace with his friends. DJ James Kennedy settles into his new life with Ali, Ali Valley. Sheena opens up about her diagnosis, which that is so misleading. I mean, it's not like there is, a di- but like, I mean, I was literally like, what the fuck? Sheena, what you, uh, uh. Uh, but it almost seems like a very special season of Vanderpump Rules. And then finally, Lala confides in Lisa Vanderpump. <laughs> I'm gassy tonight, Lisa. Oh, thank you for telling me, dear Lala. I knew I smelled something funny. Did you know Lala's been passing gas all over Tom Tom? I can't believe that. Also, I've watched this episode a couple of times before it aired tonight, and then I watched it while it aired because that's part of the fun is seeing what commercials they play. I'm truly disgusted. I'm sick. I just like to see what commercials they play during it. It's like part of the experience. And you have to say, you know, you can just tell ad wise how good this show is doing. Like you had major movie companies doing like Agent Argyle and like the Madam Web, which looks like a steaming pile of horse shit. Like you have all of these movie advertisements. Walmart is advertising all over the place. I mean, they have so many advertisements from very good companies. It was no longer of like, do you need your tummy flatter? Try Green's Tummy Tea. Um, so you had all of that and I was watching it. So I watched like the last five minutes of the, uh, the, uh, of the reunion. And I have to say, I hadn't watched that reunion. I think since it, it last aired and it, it hit me so differently because the, the reunion ends with that conversation with Rachel where producer Jeremiah is talking to her and she, you know, reveals of like, Oh, I didn't want to betray Tom and all this stuff. And you really, what really got impressed on me that I even didn't feel in the moment of how lost and broken Rachel was. I mean, truly one of the smartest things she did was check herself into a facility because that was so dark going back and watching that last five minutes. I was like, Oh shit. Like you just saw somebody so fucking confused and lost. And the only person that was in her life that would talk to her at that point was Sandoval being able to be kept under his thumb. And she's like, I don't like lying, but I don't. And it was, it, I mean, guys, it was, it was actually heartbreaking. And like I said, I'm not a uh, Rachel apologist. I've listened to a couple of episodes on her podcast. I found it very enlightening, even though I know a lot of people are trashing it, but I think, you know, listen to what it like sped up at the two time speed. And, you know, I thought it was, I thought you get a lot of information out there. I still am very curious and a little, disp- I don't know. I'm still a little curious of why. I don't know. Anyways, that last couple of minutes, just, it was just like, oh shit, I forgot how dark this got. And, uh, you know, I will say hats off to her in terms of going to actually get help. Um, and I was just thinking more about that situation of, you know, thinking that you're in love with somebody and wanting that to work out. Um, and realizing that you lied to everybody about this. She put herself on an Island because she was trying to protect this relationship. And then she was having to drink and drug and all of these things to, try to come to terms with what she was doing with the, what they were doing. And the, the promise of a greater tomorrow was being hung over her head the entire time. And Tom truly would still probably be with Rachel, even though that would be a fucking clusterfuck. He would still be with Rachel because I feel like in some senses, even if he hasn't come to terms with it, that would be the only way that he could justify his actions. Like, see, I'm dude, I'm a good dude. dude. It's like love, dude. It's like real love, dude. Also, that was the one thing also about the Nick Vile podcast 
is that I almost thought, was there an agreement to not talk about Rachel? Like it was lightly referred to, but not in a sense where I thought they were really going to get into it. And they just didn't at all. Um, I mean, it still went so long, but we, we, it was just like the absence of that. So I was like, that had to have been an agreement because I don't think Nick would have missed that entirely. I just don't. Um, so I found that interesting as well. So we start off with a bang. We start off with the new title sequence, you know, like raise your glass. I do think they should have used the sad, slower version that they did in the initial preview of like, you know, you know, you know. but instead we still have the beautiful Dina Deadly version, but there is something haunted about this song now. And they still have this very fast opening sequence where it starts off where we dip into something about her. It's fully done up. The little tiny sandwiches are out. We have Ariana in a beautiful blue dress, Katie in a beautiful green dress. They are ready to serve. Ariana has a little teacup. Now, unfortunately, this is as decorated as something about her that, that, that will be in, you know, for the near future because the city of West Hollywood came down on them hard and they had to, you know, get way more permits. They thought they could have that outside area and they couldn't. And they're having to go back to the drawing board and things truly do and are taking time. So you go in with the drone on that and then automatically it goes over to Tom Tom and you see the two Toms, Schwartz and Sandoval and Sandoval's behind the bar. And to the left, you see this lady in like this kind of like slinky yellow cocktail dress. And she's like leaning over. Like she doesn't want to be seen in the shot with the Toms. She's like, Oh shit. I'm in, I'm a paid extra. I don't even want to be here. And Tom's pouring a drink. Like dude, back to basics, dude, back to base. I, my argument was you should have kicked Tom out of that. He should have kicked himself out of that house and went back and moved into that shitty apartment that he used to live in. And in fact, Schwartz should have gone there with him and Schwartz and Sandoval. It should have been a back to the basic season of let's just be in this miserable apartment together until we figure out our own shit. So you're in Tom Tom, and then it goes kind of speeds through there with the drone. And then all of a sudden we're into Sir. And we have DJ James Kennedy between the one behind the ones and twos. You have Lala on his right side, Sheena on his left side. And I will say this is a Sir free episode. The sexy, unique restaurant is not in this episode at all. And I will say hats off in a certain way that we are not pretending that we work in these restaurants to the degree that they used to do this, but it is something weird. And I will say justice for fucking Peter. We had a Peter Madrigal free episode and I'm not liking it. We had the fucking Tom Tom alleyway and Peter is not there. Do you remember last season? Peter was already in that first episode because he was about to, he was like trying to date Lala and he was like, oh, Lala, I would like to take you for those not, you, you said you were hungering for nachos. I would love to take you out for nachos and maybe some goods and sundries at a certain point. We had no Peter. This poor Peter is out there working his ass off, counting out cocktail servers every night on the reel with no cameras there and this guy's just hoping for like a little background shot in a in a, and he's not there at all i hope they correct this because this 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 will not stand so we have this and then all of a sudden the drone moves into sir and lisa vanderpump comes out and it says lisa no ken because she will not let that happen and then we immediately go into the music which is a crime um, in itself. It's like, wow, watch me now. Uh, 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 I'm the G-O-A-T goat. I'm making moves like, whoa, oh, 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 oh. Welcome down. Gotta see it to believe it. When you see it go, whoa, 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 whoa. And we see during that time shots of like freeways, the valley, and we go over into Valley Village, which also Valley Village should be paying Vanderpump Rules residuals at this point. I mean, they either had to have raised the property value because of Vanderpump Rules or it went way lower. And we go over into Tom and Ariana's very beautiful house and you see all of the beautiful decoration that they did. I mean, and I will say, this isn't an, in defense of Tom, but they really put so much work into how this thing was decorated. And I remember, you know, Tom showing me each room, like the workout room. And even like oh, across from the kitchen, you see like a little mini fridge on the floor. And he was explaining to me that he was going to make that into kind of like a little, a little hidden bar area. And it was going to be a bookshelf. And you were going to have to pull the Stephen King's, the talisman out. Like for some reason it was Stephen King's, the talisman out. And it would open the door to that little bar entryway. Like he put so much and he was 
uh, talking about the fire pit outside. And of course, they are now in potential litigation over this house. And he was very upset about the house on the Nick Vile podcast. So we're going through this house. We see the Tom and Ariana prints on the wall. And then we see Kitty, which is Tom and Ariana's cat. And the the kitchen we're in is just flooded with flowers. It looks like the fucking secret garden in there. And you see a, a flower that says, happy birthday, love mom. And you see Ariana opening the cupboards and you see team Ariana on the fridge and Maya, the dogs right there. And she's like, I make my own coffee now. That's how we roll. And you see the little coffee machine whirring. And then she takes this little, she's like, I can do this. I can do this. No one ever did that for me. And she has like a little cinnamon pin where she puts a little heart. She puts a little heart. And I, I was just like, oh, wow. And she even says, oh, me and my cinnamon pin. And I was like, uh, guys, <laughs> I will say, I guess I just never thought about it. But I didn't know how fucking baristas and coffee magicians did shit like that. I was like, man, they've got a really steady hand. I didn't realize you had, you could get a pin that would actually do the I'm such an idiot. I always but I was like, oh wow, a cinnamon pin. But good because what you know, Tom also, you know, I made her dumpling latte, dude. She never did shit for me, dude. I made her dumpling latte. Well, we see that you can make your own coffee now. Ariana knows how to make her own coffee. Even though I will say it's always preferable to actually have somebody bring you coffee. Uh, so we see that the animals, Ariana, it's light and bright. It is not the funk that we left there in the Scandal episode where they were fighting in that living room. And uh, we're like, OK, OK. And then we hear this music. Wow, you're a miracle. I believe. And we zoom on over to Marina Del Rey. That's right. We are into Marina Del Rey. And I will say they've got to get a better shot of Sheena's little condo and Marina Del Rey, because right now it looks like it looks a bit like where my grandma used to live. And I and the thing is, I think Sheena, Sheena has like three different properties. She has one in Los Angeles, one in Marina Del Rey, I think one in San Diego, one in uh, four. I think she has four. So maybe she just buys small. But uh, we see all the summer moons toys laid out and uh, we see which is just. Anywhere Sheena moves, you need a full blown print that looks like a Renaissance painting or some kind of sexy uh, photograph. And we do. We see one of Sheena, Brock and Summer Moon. And that's all I need because we've seen. So remember the the photos of uh, Sheena and Mike Shea, the wedding photos that were like littered over that apartment, which I was like, oh, my God, there was a time if you guys have followed me even before the podcast that I tr I was like, oh, it, that to me was the holy grail that and the Bubba painting at um, at, at Schwartz and Katie's old place where it was just like Bubba, 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 which they threw out. I'm like. Who throw like I need a fucking Indiana Jones. It's like, this is history. This is a, this is archaeology. We need to go get this. Cause I'm like, how do you throw out even, even like, come on, like you, the Bubba painting, you could put one of your, I mean, I, I don't know if you'll have kids at this point, but you could, you could put one of your pets through college or something. So we're immediately in this scene and summer moon is there being a cute as a button. Brock is being like, Mr. Mom, I think he's making like a PB and J and, um, you know, Sheena's like, how do you spell your name? And she's like, S-U-F-M-E-R-M-O-L-N. And she nails it, dude. This little summer moon. I mean, we're talking Stephen Hawking levels of brilliance there. I still have trouble with Bailey. Like, I do. And Brock's like, wow. Oh, my God. Wow. Remember, I can't do a Brock imitation, so I do him as a little Irish leprechaun. And even that's a little rough. But you can tell this summer moon, you can tell Sheena is her mom because she, like, looks she looks directly down the barrel of that camera. And she's like, check that out, motherfuckers. I know how to spell my name. The show will be mine by next year. So they're all clapping, giving her. And, uh. You know, Sheena's like, do you remember how we're working on spelling summer moon? And he's like, wow, get all wow. And then we zoom on over like to the deep valley and we're at James and Allie Valley's new house in Burbank. And we go into this beautiful house and we see like a wood etching that says James and Allie's first house 2023. By the way, you know you're doing good if you get a wood etching that says first house because that means you assume that there's going to be a second or a third. I would just literally like house. Thank fucking God. House. House. 
But there's this cutting, like, who got this cutting board for James and Ali? Was DJ James like, oh, I was doing a gig in Vegas, and they had a wood cutting place, and I was like, oh, wouldn't it be cute if you had DJ James Kennedy and Ali first house in wood? Guys, night! So we're in there and uh, we see like little accoutrement. We see a hat that says cat dad because Allie has a couple of cats and that's TJ James Kennedy has a hat. He's like, I've got to get a hat that says cat dad guys night. So Allie is like putting a, um, putting like a little comforter down and DJ James Kennedy comes sliding in. He's like, Ali Dali. Ali Valley. I thought he said Ali Dally, but he actually said Ali Valley, which makes more sense. But I was hoping it was Ali Dally of like Ali Dally, a bit, a bop, a bit, a bit, a bit, a dip, bop. Like, you know, just when you do that stupid game as a kid when you're rhyming your name. Ali Dally rhymes with Valley, me, mo, Mali. Ali Dally. But it's Ali Valley. So he slides in there. They're both laughing. And James is like, can you believe this is our house? And she's like, no, I can't believe it. It's been two months, literally to the date. And it's the perfect like house. It's fucking crazy. And Ali's like, it's so quiet. And then we hear an engine roar overhead, an airplane engine roar overhead. It's an Alaska airline one. And a door just falls right in the middle of the scene because loose, these screws were not bolted. No. But we do hear an airplane roar and uh, we hear like a little bit of glass rattling. And I got to tell you, if anybody from production is listening, I know you added the grass, the, the glasses rattling. The, I know that's not you added that in post and you don't need to do that. Like, come on, you guys. I, I understand that they live in a loud place. I didn't need the glasses rattling. I'm watching this and listening to this too intensely. So, yeah, they, they live in a flight path. But, man, you know, it's, it's still their first home. He's like, we, you know, we do live by the airport. So that's a catch. Yes, yes. And then we zoom on over to Tom Schwartz's apartment in Valley Village. And you guys, guess what? Tom has kids now. A bunch of plants. And he's like, he's doing the Tom baby voice. I'm like, baba, baba. He's like, oh my God, you guys, do you want a little sip of ruski of water? Oh yeah, take it in. It's the freaking weekend. Yeah. Yeah, that's a little for you. Okay. You're not driving. Okay. You're dead. And guys, I'm not a plant guy. But is this potentially too many plants in one area? Should he spread out the plants or is this a good positioning of the plants? It felt a little like George of the Jungle. And I was like, oh my God. It just seemed like a lot. But he has like this big old bucket of water that he's just going around tipping it in. He's like, you'll... Your majesty, all right. You're my only friends now. You're my only friends. And thus begins Schwartz's mopey, feel bad for me. I don't have any friends. When we know that's not the case. He might not be friends with a lot of people on the cast, but this dude, as Katie Maloney said, he is a serial killer's wet dream. This guy has so many friends, not even in counting the plants the horticulture at all. So we go back into the song, I'm leaving you. So when you see me go up, 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 uh, uh, and we're back over at Tom and Ariana's house and Katie Maloney just walks in and Ariana's like, Hey, it's like, Hey girl. Oh my God, Katie. I love this hair so much. It is so good. And then Katie's like, Oh my God, thanks. You look great. It's that thing that we always see, you know, on these shows like you look great. No, you look great. No, you look better. And so they're hugging each other. Oh, it's so great. And Katie's like, every time I walk in here, it's like a floral shop. And she's like, oh, these are all birthday flowers for me. And then Ariana's like, are you excited to go thrifting? And Katie's like, I am really excited. I really want to find cute teacups for the sandwich shop. And guys, I think when they say thrifting, it's different than when I used to go to thrifting to like, you know, the Goodwill or Savers. I just can't imagine that was my thing. And I know that I know they're probably going to like fancy thrift stores, but in my head, I'm like, wait a sec. Like when I go to savers, like they're getting the, they're getting the plates and cups. Like, like those are all <laughs> getting the plates and cups from like the goodwill. Like, is that, is that what they're doing? But I think that's not, not it. So anyways, Katie and I talking to it says, everything's been falling into place about something about her here, her, we secured our location. We got it all redesigned by John Hutman, who is Nancy Myers, the film director's production designer. That is a huge deal. Nancy Myers is a God among directors. I mean, uh, you know, something's got to give what women want. I mean, I'm not even talking about, I mean, she's just a genius. It's complicated, but every one of Nancy Myers movies, especially when you go into a kitchen in a Nancy Myers movie, it is 
Uh, even me, it's like a wet dream for like, it's just gorgeous. Anyway, so they got him as a production designer and we brought Penny on in a more official capacity who we met last season and she has done the menu and she's going to be their COO, their chief operating officer. So you would think everything is falling into place. And I remember when things were like that going that smoothly where I was like, damn, it took forever for Schwartz and Sandys or Tom Tom to get on. I was like, man, it just must be so easy. And all these other people must be so lazy. But, you know then you see there's a problem now. Anyways, Katie says, it's really quiet in here. And Ariana goes, he's in New Zealand shooting some sort of competition show. And then we cut to Tom Sandoval selfie videoing himself in New Zealand. And he's twirling around and he's like, beautiful dude. And we just see big piles of mountain dirt. It's just, (laughs) he's, he's the, because New Zealand is so is a beautiful place, but you don't get that perspective from this. It just looks like big piles of shit dirt. And he's like, beautiful, dude. He's like, oh man, this dirt is amazing. I someday I hope to be this kind of dirt. You know, he's yeah, so he's like, beautiful, dude. Yeah. I just I was like amazing. Cause that's you see Tom right here, and you see Tom at the very end of this episode, but that's it, even though he's omnipresent in this episode, because we're all here at this moment because of his actions. So he's off doing that. And they're like, okay, cool. And Ariana in a talking head says three months ago when Tom blew up our lives. um, And then we flash back to the final episode where, you know, Oh God, it was just so that, that, that darkness where they picked back up cameras and we have that moment where they're in that living room and they both look like they haven't slept And it's just dark. And you see Tom with the mustache and he's like, me and Raquel, dude, we became like really good friends, dude. And she's like, I don't give a fuck about fire. I'm so sorry if you're at your office and that just, um, if that just disturbed anything that you were doing right now. I'm so sorry. I was just trying to be accurate to Ariana's voice. Um, (laughs) And Ariana is like, I was not like prepared to be kicked out of my house um, and start a whole new freaking life at all. So even though we still live under the same roof and we get a shot of Tom's room, which uh, I've seen a room like this is the room, sort of the room. I my first room after I got separated, it it, it just like a a dingy brown, uh, you know, a, a topping on a bed and some water bottles thrown around. Um, so yeah, she's like, even though we still don't, we're able to maintain a no contact policy and we go into Ariana's room, which is to be Ariana and Tom. And this thing is littered. We got clothes everywhere. We got clothes hanging from the dresser. I mean, this thing you can just tell it is like a bunker. She has bunkered herself into this room, but she lets us know that they communicate with his assistant Anne. And I got to tell you, this Anne, I don't know her. I I used to see her at some of the events and she looks like a really friendly, nice person. But talk about the shitty, like this job that she had as an assistant for Tom Thandoval was probably so amazing at first and fun. And it is just imagine you get this job and you're like, oh, hey, this is kind of fun. There's like a lot of cool perks. And then all of a sudden this shit blows up. And now she's having to be the go between between Ariana and Tom. And so we see Ariana texting Ann and says, please tell him to turn off the LED lights at night. It's annoying the neighbors. And, and then Ann ticks and Ann, we see her in the kitchen frantically typing. And it says, he says they fall under freedom of speech. And I'm proud to be an American where I can run my LED lights all night. Thing is poor neighbor. Like, dude, that's freedom of speech, dude. It sounds like Tom Sandoval might be running for office. Sandoval, 2024. I need LED lights in all the backyards, dude. Fuck the neighbors, dude. Those poor neighbors having to hear him like hump Rachel in the pool, like and have like deep conversations where like, dude, I see you so much more than all those girls do. I think galaxy lights are fucking awesome, dude. But he says the LED lights fall under freedom of speech. And I will say, I think that's that's what our forefathers fought for. It's guns and LED lights. But, uh, you know, she's like, hey, that's literally her job, unfortunately. So in the scene, she's like, I, 
I feel like the house is the last thing that's like tying things or us together. But what I think is psychotic, she's telling Katie, is that he wants to buy me out and stay here. If he and Katie's like, if he has that kind of money, go buy something else. And she's like, I'm sorry, but then you don't have to move. And I do. I mean, what are you going to bring your little pin pal back over here? I don't fucking think so. Ariana says now, remember at this time she thinks, and they are at this point, Tom and Rachel are supposedly still together. And in a talking head, Ariana explains, Hey, from what I can tell Tom and Rachel are still very much together because they have been sending mail and packages back and forth to each other. She even sent a postcard with lightning bolts all over it. And we see the postcard that says Arizona. Arizona didn't ask for this and it has lightning bolts. It's actually kind of a stunning postcard when I think about it. But she's like, get a new bit already. Lightning, you know, it's like lightning bolts are so 2023, baby. And Ariana's like, in the latest of unhinged behaviors, he had his assistant glue the penis flute back together. And we, Katie turns over and we see the pu the, the punis, we see the punis flute, we see the penis flute hanging on the, the living room wall and dramatic opera music plays. It's like, oh, oh, do, 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 oh, oh. And we flash back when we see three months earlier, Logan, uh, Logan Cochran, who is awesome. He's the manager at Tom Tom and one of Ariana's best friends. We see him break that penis flute and all of Ariana's friends, all the, the, the greatest hits friends are there cheering or, you know, Sheena, we see all that. And we come back and Katie's like, well, he really wanted to hold on to that thing. I once again have to shout out Tom's assistant. And <laughs> you just talk about a shitty job. Um, Hey Tom, what can I do for you today? Um, it's a big day for you, Anne. Um, you know, hey, do you know that penis flute that meant a great deal to me and that Logan um busted? I'm gonna need you to glow glue that penis. <laughs> Does Tom have HR at his? <laughs> you because you know, and goes home, and whoever. Hey Anne, you look glum. What's going on? Um. I don't want to talk about it. No, really. What's going on? You can talk to me. Uh, you wouldn't understand. Um, no, for real, Ann. You just look really down. Um, my boss, uh, he uh, had me glue a wooden uh, wooden penis flute back together that was broken out of anger. <laughs> Tom couldn't even glue his own penis flute together. I mean, talk about like deeper meaning. That's what you need to see a therapist about. Why couldn't you glue your own penis flute? Dude. The fucking media, dude, and the, the podcast, and the, the, I can't, my, my hands are shaky, dude. I can't properly glue the penis flute back. <laughs> uh. <laughs> we see a close up of the penis flute. And then all of a sudden, we're back in the valley. And DJ James Kennedy's like, What should we, what should we build today, Ali Valley? What should we build? And she's like, Well, let's try the cabinet. He's like, I hate building stuff. I do, I do. And they're putting together like probably better than Ikea, but you know, that's what I usually got Ikea furniture together. We see a beautiful pool there, but also you can tell it's AstroTurf, which I just have to say in the Valley gets really hot. That AstroTurf is going to be very tough on, you know, everybody that's going to party over there, make sure you wear sandals or flippy flops because that's going to be the, the turf is going to really, it's going to be bad on your feet. Um, and Ali's like, oh, I think we're going to end up having to call TaskRabbit about this. And he's like, when do you think we'll have our first pool party? I think it's kind of funny now that we've got a pool because when like Sandoval stopped inviting me to his parties and his like cool pool parties, as soon as the affair started, it was just more convenient with just one less person to not have DJ James Kennedy there for a pool night. And she's like, right, right, uh-huh. And he's like, obviously, my feelings are hurt, you know, in a talking head. He's like, I think I've said enough times, you know, in a message to Tom, you know, carrier pigeons have even said, hey, you know, remember your friend James? Yeah, well, his feelings are hurt. And then in the scene, he's like, well, because, you know, he's like, because you were you were having sex with his ex and like also shut him out from the entire group. DJ James Kennedy still speaks into such beautiful talking head. Like if I ever learn a language, I just, I want it to be talking head language of just where you just say like, I'm going to say something really funny and contrite and very funny. He's like, he shut me out of the entire group. And Allie goes, Hey, is there a world where you and Sandoval could be friends again? And this is the kind of talk that you're like shocked to hear. Cause you're like, wait, what? 
We're not just, hey, you guys are, are going to consider it. And DJ James Kennedy's like, friends, friends, Ali Valley. I haven't heard one fucking word from that man. He's outrageous. I honestly think he went a little cuckoo. And then they're talking head. He's like, I've seen clips of his god awful performances, you know, shirtless, laughing into the microphone. And we see interspersed clips of Tom Sandoval and the most extras where he has his shirt off. He's all ripped up and he's like doing something weird with his mouth, like, like a mini. I don't know, harmonica or something. He's like, yeah, shouting Raquel's name and itsy bitsy spider, you know, once upon a time out of a, you know, a phone fell out of a pocket and someone picked it up like, good God, man, get a hold of yourself. This comes from a man who used to rap it, sir. <laughs> I've got a, I've got a black wraith. Everybody remember when Jack's fucked faith? <laughs> get a grip, man. Good God. Guys, night. No. So um, he's like, uh, yeah, you know, and then we see another plane, you know, just pop over with loud noise. And now we go on over to Marina Del Rey and Brock's like, oh, I love our little girl. I like when she's like, put me in bed. And she is like, I know she's just laying there blinking because they're watching uh, Summer Moon on like a little kid's video camera. Um, and, uh, you know, they're just in love with their kid. And they're just laughing. I will say, uh, and this got brought up on Watch What Happens Live, that Sheena potentially needs to get a new couch. They, this couch looks like it's been through something. And I will say, uh, if Sheena, if you do get rid of your couch, I'd love to have, I mean, that would be great in my reality show museum. Like this is the couch. In fact, me saying this now, I don't want Sheena to keep it just because it's an artifact, but I do think this is potentially an iconic couch because this is where the Sandoval Sheena um conversation happened in the scandal episode from season 10 um but anyway she is like when i get on this couch i just get scandal sandoval flashbacks and we flash back to that scene where he's like how do i fucking end the relationship that's not you know um you know and she's like you be a fucking adult and you have a conversation with her she's clearly going through it with the big old hoop earrings sheena deserved an emmy for this scene this is three months earlier and uh Brock's like, he never responded to you, huh? Hey, Tom never responded to you. After you reached out at the Ali died, huh? No, Sheena asked that to Brock. And uh, he's like, no. And Sheena lets us know in a talking head that Ali was one of Tom Sandoval's best friends from childhood. And, you know, who we got close with, we would do Coachella with. He would come and barbecue. He was really big on brisket. It's a little detail. He was such an amazing person, Sheena says. And recently he passed away and guys, no matter what Sandoval did or whatever, I mean, that's just horrible. I mean, everybody, Doty said, Ali was a Ariana. Everybody seemed to have loved this guy. And I'm sure Sandoval needs him now more than ever. So your heart does go out to him about this. Um, and Brock's like, I mean, look, the guy didn't do anything right, but he also, the amount of like disconnect that everybody put him through was a lot. And so I'm like, Brock being one of the first ones to tumble of like, oh, you guys, look what you did to him. And she was like, honey, I literally messaged him. And we see this text where it's like, Tom, I don't even have the words right now. I just want you to know we are all sending you our love and condolences. Please reach out if you need us. I want to make sure you're okay. So we see this text and you're like, okay, that's probably the right thing to do. And she's like, well, I didn't hear from him. And I was like, I'm going to send him another message. And that one never delivered. So I'm like, okay, he blocked me. And then I looked on Instagram. He blocked me. He blocked Shenanigans, my podcast. And he blocked Summer Moon. Oh, you guys. She's like, like Sandoval, I get it. You're mad at me. You block me. You hate the podcast. You block shenanigans, but you're going to go and block Summer Moon. And we see these really adorable photos of Summer Moon. And she's like, I just, I don't know how you could block that adorable face. And I will say, listen, this is obviously the fight of the season. This is the main storyline from here on out is the, the tension between Summer Moon and Tom Sandoval. This is the major beef of the season. Cause you know, you know, I hope Sandoval gets to a point where he's like, dude, Summer, if I could just, if I could just talk to you for a second away from your parents, like, listen, dude, it was so, um, you just don't even know, my whole world was turned upside down, dude. And like, I invited you to my Tom Sandoval and the most accurate shows, but it turns out 
Um, you can't get into it because they all serve alcohol there. But it was just like you, dude. Like I just, I, I just always thought I just, I couldn't take it, dude. Um, it is completely serious, uh, silly and ridiculous. And that's why I'm laughing at it. But the reality of the situation, you guys is if you block somebody on Instagram, you have that option where it'll say blocking this person will block all of their accounts. So I'm assuming that Sheena set up all of these Instagram accounts, including her daughters, unless her daughter really is that kind of Stephen Hawking intelligence where she's like, mommy, I'm going to set up my own IG account and my own YouTube page. Um, so I think that's obviously why it blocked, but in my head, I love to imagine that summer moon was blocked by Tom Sandoval specifically like, dude, no, nah, dude, no, nah. I'm cool. With I'm cool with ocean, dude, but not summer moon, man. That's bad news bears, dude. You can't try. She is cute, dude, but no, nah, it's not, it's not cool, dude. Summer moon, bad news. Not going to follow that one. Block. So I think that's what it is. And he's like, hey, what's the latest we know about the Raquel? And she was like, well, Kyle told me that she was in the, this is Kyle Chan, told me that she was going to be in the facility for 45 days. And then she extended for another 30. But I don't know the timeline of when that 75 days started. Um, and he's like, this one is, is just a whole bag of mixed worms. Like, uh, to be honest, huh? Huh? And then she like, worm with mustaches. Bang, bang. Catchphrase. Um, also about that. Man, I really wish in certain aspects that Rachel would have come back for this season now. But I mean, listen, I don't think that, you know, Rachel just went on her Rachel Goes Rogue podcast and still is like, hey, listen, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, Sheena hit me. Sheena hit me, you know, like really still. And I, I'm I, I just uh, yeah, that's not going to that's not going to mend that relationship when you were once again calling Sheena out. But it is interesting because from this scene, you kind of see how it is dying down a little bit. Brock is like, oh, you guys put Sandoval through hell, did ya? You know? So anyways, and then we go to the music. Hey, turn it up. Uh, uh, uh. And we go over to Lala's apartment and we're in Ocean's room, which looks, uh, you know, nicer than most places I've lived in. And we see a little ball pit and they're like, you know, Lala's mom is there. She's like, oh my God, that ball pit is just going to be the end of us. She thinks we can't see her. She just disappears in the ball pit. And it is just ridiculous. Lisa is Lala's uh, mom's name. And Lala on a talking head says, I think of my mom as like a pod. I think of my family as like a pod of orcas, which is just like, that's why we do know that uh, animal rights. In fact, do you remember that ad where it was like nude and her and Sheena and Ariana painted themselves nude. Like, I don't think they painted themselves, but they were like painted nude and like, like look like orcas. So I like that. She's comparing her family to orcas. She's like, you just add to the pod. No one ever leaves. That's also usually like, that's a good log line for a horror film. It's like a pod of orcas and none of them ever leave. Anyways. Uh, Lala's like, well, I'm glad that Easton could like take ocean from you. And Easton is Lala's brother. And we find out that he has an apartment now next to Lala, pretty much. And the mom's like, yeah, it's life changing for me. I can call and say, hey, can you do this? Can you take her? Because Lisa is now uh, being one of the primary caregivers to Ocean, has uprooted her life and came out and just helped, which is amazing. And now Easton is there as well. Now I'm told also, I think if I'm not mistaken, Easton co-hosts Give Them Lala, the podcast with Lala. Uh, I think that's true. I'm sorry if I'm giving incorrect information, um, but I, I'm curious if Easton is living the life. And I'm curious if Easton is now going to be a character this season. So he's there in the complex, complex, the mom's there. And then Lala's like, oh, people ask me, like, are you dating? And I'm like, yo, what's up? That feels like it would fuck up this dynamic, yo. We got a lot going on. Um, anyways, they're just singing Ocean's praises saying, uh, you know, she's a magical child. And then Lala says, well, I hope my custody situation wraps up soon. As according to watch what happens live tonight, Lala says it is not wrapping up anytime soon, but she says, I just keep thinking if, even if this custody custody situation is like put to bed, it's still temporary. You know, I mean, with the goal with custody is just looking out for the well being of ocean. Lala says, his biggest thing, Randall, is I don't want to give her full legal because that would mean she can put Ocean on Vanderpump Rules, but I'll give her final say on education and health. And she's like, and I'm like, well, that's all I fucking want. I don't give a fuck about putting her on Vanderpump Rules, yo. And I think that is brilliant. And that is something that I will, like, Lala is such an, a fascinating character because she, 
And I think, you know, there's a couple ways to look at her reaching out to Rachel at the end of this episode is that it's smart in terms of keeping her on the show and kind of keeping that storyline and her engaged because we're not necessarily going to see her dating on this show and she's not in love or, you know, been cheated on by any of the main cast members. So that would keep her on. But at the same time, she is a smart cookie. Like, and I don't mean that in a demeaning way. Like she does know, like, you know, Randall thought I wanted her on Vanderpump rules. I don't give a fuck. I actually just want to actually have control of what she learns, her medical and things like that. Um, but anyway, she says, listen, I've gone through a lot of trauma. I thought it was like the perfect time. Um, she says, uh, sorry. I thought it was like the perfect time when I was with my ex and like, look what happened, mom. And she's like, well, you thought it was the perfect time, the perfect partner, the perfect everything, but it was actually the perfect storm. And Lala starts crying. And she's like, last year I had to put everything that I had personally experienced on the back burner because I've been fixated on a custody battle, but now I got to deal with my own heartbreak. Um, and I thought that was interesting uh, to, you know, I thought she was going to say I had to put all this on the back burner because of scandal, but she was like, no, I'm dealing with the custody and actually made me put my own emotions on the back burner. So I'm still getting over this man who had promised me the moon and the stars and everything when she was 25. And we flash back to a scene with her and Lisa fighting from last season where she's like, I met someone who was like head over heels for me, Lisa. And, uh, she says, I just cry all the time. And she said, listen, I know that part will end. Um, but in order for me to heal and be soft and a good role model for my kid, I got to go through these emotions, she says, or else everyone around me is fucked. Um, and I think that's interesting. I think there's a lot of truth to that. And I think Lala is a very popular character with a lot of women out there. And I think this is probably maybe where they relate to her on is that, look, I know I'm crying now, but that's going to get out. like, she does seem to have the right things to say at the right times. But sometimes when she pops off and she's like, you want to get popped? Like when she's that Lala, when she's like giving them the bad Lala, it can like undercut some of these really important feelings and messages she has because, you know, She's an attack dog and she's admitted that herself. And I think sometimes when she's in that mode, she says some really stupid things. Um, but she says, look, I look at everybody, everybody, Ariana gets a new man. And we see a picture of Dan, Ariana's new boyfriend. And I'm like, what's the motive there? Uh, you know, I don't trust him. And the mom's like, there's nothing wrong with questioning this. And the other right now, um, you know, she's like, your blinders are off. So of course you're going to think these things about everybody. Um, but she's like, you know, you just got to work through it. And it's baby steps, the mom says. And they're like, I love you. I love you. And yeah, how would, and that's the other thing too, in terms of Ariana is that I, part of me is like, understands getting into a new relationship, but also part of me is like, man, that is so traumatic to go through that. And also traumatic to go through what Lala went through in terms of Randall, of being able to trust again, or even I like that phrasing of be soft, of able to be soft, because when we're in love, we are letting our guard down. And there is, we, we are allowing ourselves to be soft. We are not allowing, you know, because we are so hardened by life and, 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 and the passage of time that when we allow ourselves to be soft, that is sometimes it can be the biggest threat to us. And we pay the ultimate price sometimes for being soft. So I think that's really kind of an interesting concept. And I don't love the bringing Dan, Ariana's new boyfriend into it. But yeah, I'm sure a lot of people are going to question her about that this season, but to each their own, right? So uh, then we actually cut to commercial and we have a commercial for Argyle and Ariana's in this commercial. It's the, uh, you know, these are like in like baked in advertisements. And I will say, I read somebody who was like, I can't believe Lala got to do a commercial with Dua Lipa. And I want to let everybody know, Dua Lipa and Henry uh, Cavill, uh, or however you say his name, the guy who played Superman, they weren't actually on set with Lala. Like they're just shooting Lala's reactions to do I think everybody knows that, but I did see somebody comment the other day and I was like, no, 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 no. Lala's like not on set with Dua Lipa. It's just, you know, it looks like she is. That makes sense to everybody, right? But I will say, and this is another moment for me to bring up one of my favorite baked in advertisements to Vanderpump Rules. And that of course is Like a Boss from the movie, Like a Boss from 2020, right before pandemic. And it was Sheena and Lala. And all of a sudden they, they did a scene of Vanderpump Rules and all of a sudden you hear this. Break's over. How do I look? Like a boss. I wish. Me too. Like a boss. 
like a boss. Don't you stand in the way of our success No, nope. We stick together through the thick and the thin yeah. How we gonna win? Straight, Straight hustling. hustling We buying PJs, I sell my hand This is a party, we ain't never gonna land We are too bad And then they start playing clips from the actual movie Like a Boss with Tiffany Haddish But I gotta tell you, it, it's like an only like a minute uh, commercial In that episode of Vanderpump Rules And I was like, that song pops off I love that song, to this day like unironically, I've got problems. Okay, so we pick up at a restaurant on uh, in the valley at Ventura Boulevard, right across from the Great Greek. DJ James Kennedy comes in. He's like, "Oh, I see him over there, Schwartz. What's up, brother?" And you know, Schwartz's like, "How are you, bro? What's going on? I got you something, dude." He's like, "No, really? Yeah, um, yeah. Being a new homeowner, you're gonna come. You're gonna become obsessed with these plants." I was like, no, you didn't, bro. No, you didn't. Guys, night. He's like, yeah, I got you a little Monstera plant. My gosh. And by the way, also, when you become a homeowner, you're going to have like a borderline fetish with like smells, you know? And he's like, you're kidding me. You got me like a candle, bro. Oh, my God. He's like, <laughs> Schwartz Tilly was like, Hit that, bro. Hit that, bro. I love this. this. This is truly men getting older. Hit that, bro. Used to be about a joint, and now it's about a citrus candle. And, you know, DJ James Kennedy's like, oh, my God, bro. No. Like, I feel like DJ James Kennedy's, like, close to tears. He's like, can you dig it, dude? Can you dig I can totally dig it. Oh, my God. It smells amazing. This is like a citrus is it like a citrus pussy? Ha 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 ha. It, he's like, it's an olfactory delight. He like citrus pussy. Oh, he's like, yeah, I mean, uh, something, dude. Yeah, citrus pussy, dude. You still got to be a bro. Like, pussy. Yeah, girls. You know, this candle sells like citrus pussy. Women. We love women. Guys night. So it's very exciting. And he's like, it smells so good, though. So fresh. And then, uh, you know, they order and uh, they, you know, Schwartz orders a light beer and DJ James Kennedy's like, oh, I'll have a double espresso. Yes, a double espresso. So we're like, okay, he didn't order a drink. And Schwartz is like, oh, by the way, this is like the first time I'm wearing the Schwartz and Sandy hat out in public, you know, since you know what, <laughs> you know, I was worried like I might get a boo. And he, and DJ James Kennedy's like, hey, you might still get a boo for at this point, you know, from the right person. Oh, <laughs> don't say that, dude. Who knows? You know, Um and then Schwartz goes, oh, the biggest fight I've ever been in with Tom Sandoval was over the name of that bar, Schwartz and Sandy's. Like, he campaigned so hard, like Mr. Marketing Genius, to put that name on the side of the building. And then you know what? You have to hold yourself to a higher standard, bro. Anyway, I'm rambling, dude. And he does the all shocks, like, with his head, you know, with his, with his chin in his hand. Oh, um. I love that. He's like, that was the biggest fight I've ever been in with Sandoval. How about the biggest fucking fight should have been all this shit? What are you talking about? The name of the building doesn't mean dick at this point. And also, James is like, well, should we just call it Schwartz and Jamesies? Should we? Should we call it Schwartz and Jamesies? In a talking head, Schwartz, uh, Schwartz, uh, <laughs> Schwartz. And more like kind of mopey stuff about the business. It's like, oh, after Tom's affair became public, our beautiful bar, Schwartz and Sandy's became like the scene of the crime, you know? Reservations are down. A bunch of the staff has quit. We felt like zoo animals in there, you know? People harassing servers, coming in there with a vengeance. It was toxic. <laughs> I love that it was like a war zone. <laughs> Guys. People were like smearing feces on like the walls of Schwartz and Sandy's. They were taking big old dumps on the bar tops and things like that. It was crazy, you guys. Uh, the, the ballad of Tom Schwartz. Nobody understands my pain. I'm a man, but does that make me a bad person? I love a man named Sandoval, but that don't make it right to come into my premises and poo 
soup all night. It's the ballad of Tom Schwartz. I'll never take responsibility for the things that I've caused. And I knew about the affair with Raquel the night after it happened, even though I'm not really going to say that in this scene because they could have shut DJ James Kennedy. And I made Katie feel cre- crazy and I gaslit her, but I was protecting my friend. The end. He's like, right now, I do have a lot of resentment towards Tom Sandoval. I do. He said, like, I'm sorry that I put you in a fucked up position and that I essentially used you as a shield for my affair. And he's like, Tom, one of the last things I said to Tom after the fucking hell you put me through, after what you did to our friends, after what you did to Ariana, I was like, you better fucking spend the rest of your life with Raquel. You know, I got enough problems with my my life. It's just like, I did not need this. My God, man. I I will... But Schwartz played a big part in this. Schwartz even like kept going with it where he did a little fake bit with, do you have a crush on Raquel and did the little kiss at Sheena's wedding. He was like, it's like you treated Ariana like this too, dude. You treated your friend group like this too. Yes. Not to the degree, but you knew immediately the day after it first happened. And then it kept happening. You knew Schwartz knew. And I even think it's ballsy to say this in front of DJ James Kennedy because he seems still like he's, you know, he's like, you better be with her for the rest of your life. I was like, DJ James Kennedy's like, what? No, what are you talking about? Anyways, in a talking head, Schwartz is like, do I have permission to bitch a little? Do I? Um, You know, Sandoval almost broke me. Last year, it almost broke me. I, I got divorced. My brother Bert has been having some serious health issues. Like we had so many bar woes. You could almost say that Sandoval was kind of like a radioactive cherry on top of my shit Sunday of a year. Um, Part of me felt like I was a little bit banished from the group games, like a pariah. And he's like, I know what that's like. He's like, yeah, you do. You do. But like, thank you for also like extending me some empathy and remembering that I am not Tom Sandoval. And he's like, you're your best Tom when you're just Tom Schwartz. You are. Thank you. Thank you. You're not your best Tom when it's Tom, Tom. Sorry. I'm really happy to be on good terms with James, despite the little teeny weeny platonic kiss I had with Raquel. And we flash back to that platonic kiss because the way the rest of the gang has been treating me, you know, it's like, I almost have to look in the mirror and be like, you're not Tom Sandoval. And then he does a Bill fucking Clinton imitation. He's like, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. And he does it like a pretty good one, but like, do not invoke Bill Clinton in the year 2024, dude, please. I mean, what the heck is like, uh, now I'm going to do a Jeffrey Epstein imitation. Like, Hey, I didn't have anything to do. Like, what, what are you thinking? Anyways, the waiter comes over. I always find it weird. Like, why, why are we, I don't care if they're having duck egg rolls. Like he gets another espresso. He's like getting really hopped up. And DJ James Kenny's like, I- I'm not drinking again. I don't. And he's like, yeah, I didn't know if you were sober again. He's like, yep, yep. He's like, I thought you were like dabbling in moderation. He's like, no, I've been DJing like literally just water, Red Bulls and Fiji waters. Wow. And then in a talking head, a producer's like, why did you stop drinking again? He's like, well, um, Ali definitely didn't give me an ultimatum this time. And we flash back to the ultimate, like, you know, that this is 100% my decision. Uh, and he tells Tom, he's like, I'm meditating. I'm working out at Equinox every day. And he's like, look at these bad boys. Look at these. Welcome to the gun show. Look at these. And he's like, uh, but, but I do smoke weed. He's like, oh, you're California sober? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I smoke a little weed, bro. You know, yeah, all day, all day, every day. You know, and talking he's like, still technically a California sober. It's like, I wake up, I smoke a little bit. I drink my coffee. I go to the gym. I smoke a little more, you know. And Schwartz is like, yeah, you got to have a little release. And he pulls out his, like James pulls out his vape pin. And then he's like, it just makes my day better. Yeah, drugs do that. And I do want to, I will say, obviously weed agrees with him way more than alcohol ever did. So who am I to judge anything? But that does seem like a lot of weed, doesn't it? It's like, it's like in the morning, goes and does his shit, smokes more with like, it's, it's consistent throughout. It's not like a treat when you're like, I'm winding down and watching my cold case files, you know, I'm watching American Nightmare on Netflix and I'll have a little puff, puff pass of my weed pin. Like it's all day every like that's uh, teach their own right so he's like good for you man good for you all right and he's like uh, have you and ariana spoken and he's like no nah, 
I don't think she wants to see me. Like in her mind right now, at least I'm an extension of Tom Sandoval. Maybe I don't know. Um, and he's like, do you know if any of the girls are coming to see you tomorrow at your DJ gig at Tom Tom? He's like, I invited all of them. Well, say for instance, Ariana's there. Should I just give like a little bow? And he's like, a hundred percent. Or should I just avoid her? And he's like, oh, <laughs> getting he's like or should i like avoid her altogether you know like should i be like a quick hello and like if you guys need anything he's like yes yes do a quick hello dude tomorrow let's make it fun let's make it a fresh start you're gonna blossom you know he's like yeah a new flower a new smell a good smell yes and he's like oh citrus puss pussy guys no yeah 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 Woo! okay so now we're in a scene with ariana and sheena and they're getting massages. I mean, we still in the year of 2024, we still have these scenes where they have to go and get massages or their tummies rubbed or whatever. There's always spa scenes in Vanderpump Rules and reality shows in general. So they're getting like a couple's massage. And, um, you know, uh, Sheena wants a deep massage, you guys. So they're getting under the covers, have a little girl time. And she's like, how's the sandwich shop? How's it coming along? We just got a bunch of plates and cups and stuff. At the uh, the th at the thrift store, as Macklemore says, and we see a flashback to that of like, oh my god, this is the tiniest teacup. Imagining doing shots of tequila in this, and um, you know, she's like, well, how was your day, Sheena? And she's like, well, we're trying to potty train Summer Moon, and Summer Moon won't go to the bathroom because she's so upset about Tom Sandoval fucking blocking her. She can't actually train to use the bathroom because she's so stressed out about this man blocking her. She's like, mommy, I can't poopy until I get unblocky, you know? But Sheena's like, hey, I tell, this is kind of warped. Sheena's like, I tell her how Ocean always goes on the potty. And I was on the phone with Lala and she was like, Ocean doesn't poop on the toilet. And I was like, yes, she does. So Summer Moon is going to grow up thinking Ocean is like a wonder can or something. Anyways, listen, she's like, oh, I wanted her to meet Dan because I hear that he's really good with kids. And Ariana's, yeah, he's like really good with his two nephews. He hangs out with them and teaches them things that they're not supposed to do. And I feel like Sandoval would actually be good with kids too, if you're going to teach things not to do. Uh, she lets us know in a talking head, Ariana, that she met Dan at one of her oldest friend's weddings, literally 10 or 11 days after everything blew up. And we sit, remember that photo of her in that dress on Instagram, that beautiful flowing pink and different colored dress. And we see pictures of her and Dan together, but they met at the wedding. He's a personal trainer and a bartender, and he lives in New York. So we're doing a little long distance thing, she says. Um, and then Sheena in a talking head says, I don't think Ariana has fully processed the trauma with Tom. Um, and that's so true, but she's, but as long as Dan, she says, as long as Dan doesn't sleep with one of Ariana's best friends, he's already a giant step up from her ex. I, I would have loved this moment more if Sheena realized, oh my God, I'm one of Ariana's best friends. I better never sleep with Dan. Oh my God. But yeah, it's true. And I, I think Sheena says something here that I think is very important of like, yeah, I, I don't think Ariana has processed the trauma because how could you process the trauma? We see that Sandoval has definitely not processed the trauma. So I do wonder, and I don't like, I do wonder, I mean, I wonder this for myself too, is how you process trauma, how long it takes you to move through things. You know, we always talk about uh, my mom dying and how I will have really tough days and, and really, you know, decent days or one part of the day will be good and then the other will be shit. Um, and it just comes at you. You dream weird dreams. And, you know, we all go through trauma, every one of us. And it, it's one of those things is that there's no rule book or guidebook on how to go through these things or what the right thing to do. And it's like, there's no rule book saying, oh, you, you can't, you can't be in a meaningful relationship like 11 days out. There's no rule book telling you that you can or can't do these things. You got to figure it out on your own. Um, but anyways, Sheena's like, I love that Dan and Brock are, are workout buddies. And Sheena's like, we got good ones, finally. And I'm like, I hope, who knows? Like conventional wisdom says none of the guys are good. We're all not good. Anyways, they get done with the massage and then they go, I never saw this in a massage place. They're like, hey, how about a chocolate tasting? And they sit him down like it's like nice little chocolate thing and like offer him champagne and like, I don't know, man. It was like a whole, I was like, this fucking Willy Wonka in the chocolate factory all of a sudden. But Sheena is not going to take champagne because she's on no alcohol for three weeks because she is on um, Zoloft. I think that's what she's on Zoloft and she doesn't want it to interact with that. Uh, she's three weeks into her taking Zoloft 
She just doesn't want any weed, any alcohol to, you know, counter affect anything that she's taking. And Ariana's like, how do you feel otherwise? Like in terms of it, you know, working for you right now. And she's like, I feel mentally stronger, but I'm breaking down every day. My therapist diagnosed me with OCD. She lets us know in a talking head about six months ago. And I felt like I was doing really well. Um, but then until the affair broke and it took my OCD, mixed it with my anxiety and it just went to a whole other level, Sheena says. And my brain is just going crazy about, well, like if Tom could do this to Ariana, could Brock do this to me? Would Brock do something like this with Lala? And just like, it's been a fucking ro roller coaster. I'll say that. And I think that is like Sheena, man, she gets a bad, right? She's been on this show since day one. Like she was the connecting piece that brought us from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills into Vanderpump Rules. And Sheena is a very unique character, but I think she is essential to Vanderpump Rules. And I think people will see this. And I already saw some people like kind of making fun of her and stuff. And I'm like, dude, her mind works like all of our minds work so differently. They, you know, and it's like, yeah, she probably did spin out because we all were saying Brock fucking probably banged Rachel too. Remember? I, I remember. Like, remember when everybody was saying that, like, she really does sit there and think about these things. Like she is an actual person. And on top of that, yeah, she was dealing with the, having the court with Rachel, all of this shit. Like, I'm sure she was a basket of case. Um, so anyways, she asked Ariana, how are you with Schwartz right now? And she's like, well, I haven't blocked on everything. Uh, after we talked that night and we flash back to that where she's like, I will not have mutual friends with him Schwartz. So I am not your friend anymore. I am just not. And I was like, well, we're not going to have a relationship. She tells Sheena, but I'm not like actively saying fuck off to him. Right. And she's like, yep. But then he did watch what happens live. She says, and he was like, people need to go and hug Tom. And she's like, oh, I saw that. And we flash back to that night and Tom Schwartz had obviously had some stuff to drink. And he's like, oh, he knows Andy. Like he's a monster for what he did. But if you see him, maybe like give him a hug, even if he doesn't deserve him, like give him a hug. Which that is such bad advice to give because people will give him a hug. Like it's don't put more temptation in front of Tom Sandoval at that moment. Anyways, Ariana's like, so I texted him and then I blocked him. And I don't remember exactly what I said to Schwartz, she says in a talking head, but I don't think it was that bad. And then Schwartz is like, um, well, here's the text. It says, fuck you on um, blocking your number. Go choke on Sandoval's dirty ass dick somewhere. And then he's like, oh, Jesus. Um, For the record, I've never choked on Sandoval's dirty ass dick. And that I took that to mean, and I was really nice of him to say, but I took that to mean is that Sandoval is not, um, he's not girthy and he doesn't have length on his penis. Uh, not enough for Schwartz to choke on it. That's what I, how I took that on it. He's like, oh, it was never dirty. I made him wash it in a basin. Um, so yeah, he does not, I do not choke on his dirty ass dick at all, dude. So take that Ariana. Anyways, Ariana's like, I don't see a friendship there for me. And she's like, well, are you going to go to Tom, Tom, Ariana? And, uh, what if they're there? And, you know, she's like, well, you know, I'll just go into the bathroom stall then, you know, I'll, I'll take a shit. <laughs> and then she smiles e evilly. <laughs> what? What if that's the scene with Ariana? We just see her in a bathroom taking a dump. And I'm like, what a hero. What a brave person to show taking a dump on national TV. We go to commercial and we see a look at the Valley with Jax Taylor. The Valley with Jackson Britt. Oh, uh, this will be premiering in March. Um, and it's going to be like Beverly Hills. Well, they'll have a scene and then it's going to go right into Vanderpump Rules. But it'll have a scene in Vanderpump Rules with Jax and Sandoval, they'll go into the Valley and it'll start an episode of The Valley with Jax Taylor. So yeah, I I'm looking forward to that. So we pick back up and uh, everybody's getting ready for the big uh, Tom Tom. You know, DJ James Kennedy's like, Ali, Ali Valley, look at me in these glasses I'm going to wear for tonight that's yours. And then we go over to Lala's apartment and her and Sheena are talking about contouring their face. And, you know, just two girls putting, talking, contouring, talking about bone structure. Lala says she has none. She has a rounder face. She's like, I've got to create what people call the Ozempic look. You know how many? And then she was like, you know how many people have asked me if I take Ozempic? I'm like, no, it's called Sandoval. It's called Scandoval, which that would be amazing. Like if we just start accusing people of being on Scandoval. Oh my God. She totally takes Scandoval. You know, she does. Now we jet on over to Tom and Ariana's house. We're in the bunker that is Ariana's bedroom. We see shoes all lined in the floor. She is FaceTiming Dan, her new boyfriend. He's like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm just relaxing before I go work out. 
Like, dude, if that, if like, if you ever hear me go, I'm just relaxing before I go, go work out, just know that I'm not going to work out. I will stay relaxing. Like there's, the, by the way, and if I know there's a workout in my future, there's no possibility that I'll ever be relaxed. That's why, you know, this guy loves working out because like he, yeah, he's like, yeah, I can go relax on a dime and then just go work out. Anyway, she's like, I'm nervous about going to Tom Tom tonight. You know, he's like, why are you nervous? Thank God he doesn't go. Why are you nervous, Bubba? And she's like, well, I haven't been there since like that night that all of this transpired at the Tom Sandoval and the most extras concert. We flash back to that March 1st, 2023. We're almost a month out from the one year anniversary. And she's like, part of me was like, should I go? And then I was like, no, if I don't go, then it's like, uh, you know, that all that shit wins. I shouldn't have to make my life smaller because Tom messed everything up up she says and and guys pay attention to this shit that's that's exactly what we need to be remembering she shouldn't be having to make her life smaller because of something that tom sandoval did and i was like i just i was taking a break to rest my voice a second ago and i went on facebook which is a big mistake all these fucking facebook groups there's such like internal misogyny in there in terms of just like did you see ariana stand up on a table and dance at tom tom like what the fuck you don't think she was like i'm standing like you know these people are encouraged to have a good time cut loose all this shit like anything ariana does now is like oh god she's just disgusting it's like dude she didn't, I, I just, I don't, I don't know if I will ever be able to understand that, that, that way of thinking. Anyway, she's like, yeah, I can go there and make new memories there. I can go and do that. Maybe it won't have that power over me anymore. So she's like facing her demons and I'll be able to just look at it at some bar. She doesn't even say some shitty bar, just some bar. And Dan's like, you always got me. I'll cheer you on from the sidelines. And she's like, yeah, from, he's like from New York. I'm only 2000 miles away. And she's like 2,427 to be exact. I think I looked it up one time. Uh, so it seems like they're smitten with each other, which is great. That's what we want. Now we go over to Tom Tom. We're 30 minutes into this episode. We finally see a Lisa Vanderpump establishment for the first time. DJ James Kennedy and Ali Dally walk in. The music is like, bum, but now whoa, 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 whoa. we see the, uh, all the, the drinks, the food. It is hopping at Tom Tom. Uh, everybody is there. And this is where we see the man, the myth, the legend. We see Ken in a blue suit. He has the dog hooked and it says Ken, Lisa's husband. And she'd be Ken, God among man. He's just there. I swear to God, they slowed this footage down. Um, but it's just, I I'm so happy to see, you know, I'm so happy to see Ken right I here. I can't believe yes. that Tom Zandoval oh. had Tom oh. when Ariana's oh. away. I know. Uh, in the truth, I know. Jacuzzi as I know. Well. I know. Yeah. I know. Are you worried about that? Are you spreading? I can't believe that. I can't, I can't believe Lisa won't have me have lines in Tom Tom scene. I can't believe that. I'm a star. I did so much for jacuzzis last season. I can't believe that. Okay, and then we see Lisa Vanderpump. I'm walking into Tom Tom, this place I created with Nick Lane. And DJ James Kennedy's like, where do, where do I set up? In the balcony right there. Oh, Lisa. Hello, Lisa. She's like, are you excited to be here? So excited, Lisa. When are you going on? And he's like, I go on whenever you tell me you're the boss. I like to hear that, you naughty boy. And then we see Schwartz slow-mo walking into the restaurant. They don't ID this guy. You need to ID this guy. He's wily. And she's like, come on, go do what you're supposed to supposed to be doing, DJ James Kennedy, riling this crowd up, making them thirst for drinks. And then we see Sheena and Lala walk in. And Schwartz is like hugging the bartenders like, bro, oh, my God, what's going on? Uh, Sheena hugs Lisa. Everybody's hugging each other. Lala's in this like one piece suit. And then you see Katie and Ariana walk in together arm in arm. And Katie's like, remember when we first walked in here, when it first opened up, how excited we were. And they do flash back to that first night of them walking in together. Katie has long hair and they were just so excited for their men. And it kind of did. I mean, that's what this show has. It, sh it does have this history and it has these history of relationships and friendships. And that's sometimes where the real housewives sometimes have gotten it wrong, where they have to build up to relationships because they don't actually cast real friend groups. But these people have been with each other so long so they can flash back to these things. And it kind of does tug at your heartstrings a little bit. So they walk into this and you're remembering the first time they walked in, they come back and everyone's like, hi, hi. Oh my God, she's here. And Arna's like, I have to sit right here again. And they're like, what do you mean? That's where I sat the last time I was here. 
the night she found out. And Lisa's like, hello, oh my God, you're here. We have a surprise for you. Tom Sandoval and the Mos Exeras. What's up, dude? Like, wouldn't that be great if Lisa just totally fucks her? I'm like, ah, I'm sorry, we're filming a show, nigga Lane. Anyways, they're like, oh, no, no, face over here. And Lala's like, how are you feeling about all that? And Ariana's like, I'm really shaky, actually. And she's like, are you? And Sheena's like, well, you're in better company this time. She's like, yeah. And then we see DJ James Kennedy behind the ones and twos. Who's ready to party? Guys, die. All right. And, you know, everybody's like, yay, DJ James Kennedy. They're filming them. It's just a real fun environment. Logan. The TomTom Tom manager is in a very sleek suit with one of those cool necklaces. I wish I could pull these kind of necklaces off. Like, I just wish I could just be styled one day for clo- clothing that fit my my thick and chunky body. Um, anyways, he's like, you guys want a drink? Um, and then this is when Schwartz pulls up at the same time. And he's just, you can tell he feels so awkward around Ariana. And he's like, oh, 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 hi, hi, Ariana. What's, hi, hi, uh. And Ariana's like, hey, hey. And in a talking day, he's like, oh, man, she's got the wall up, dude. She's an ice queen. Yeah. I understand that she has this exalted status. Queen Ariana, patron saint of scorned women, you know. But, like, until the ice melts with her, I just have a feeling it's going to be really hard to make any inroads with the rest of these girls. No, it's not. And also... Fuck you. That is a shitty thing to say in a talking head Schwartz because you know that plays into this bullshit of like ice queen, the exalted one, patron saint of blah, blah, blah. And this is the shit that you put that shit in people's ears and they're like, oh yeah, maybe she, like I just thought it was one of the shittier lines of the night. And then Schwartz goes over and talks to a bartender. He's like, Kevin. And he's like, what's going on, daddy-o? Uh, how you feeling? And he's like, "Um, I'm okay. Um, could I have a hug? Could, hey, Kevin, could I have a hug? He literally says, can I have a hug? <laughs> this is like Tom Sandoval's assistant, Ann. Schwartz, you should not be asking employees behind the bar for a hug. You're going around asking employee, could I, could I have a hug? Like at the night when they're counting their tips. Hey, did, um, the, the, the our, one of our owners ask you for a hug tonight? Oh yeah. He asked me too. Did he ask you? He sure did. Like Schwartz shouldn't be going around asking people on the clock for hugs. Anyways, they're like, okay, I need a drink. And fast, Ariana says, they're all talking. Lisa goes over and kind of pats Ariana like, are you are you all right, clever girl? You know, uh, it's all kumbaya. And uh, they're like, this is just weird, Ariana. And she's like, I didn't expect to really feel all of this coming up right now. She says in a talking head, you, you know, you think it's just a place or it's just a chair. Uh, it's a table, whatever. And I've sat in this table so many times, but now this time it's just really it's just really kind of taking over my memories of this place. And we then do a flashback of Ariana telling Tom Sandoval, it's like, Tom, this place, it just looks unbelievable. And he's like, Ariana, there's two of the most happiest years of my life. The year we first started dating and this year. And she's like, well, then what's going to happen, uh, you know, in the future? He's like, it's going to be even better. It wasn't. It wasn't. And then we go to the, you know, the ribbon cutting ceremony where the Toms are in the motorcycle outfits. And he's like, I have, you know, and then we have that scene where it's in Tom Tom and she's crying. I believe this is after like a dinner with Stassi and Lala potentially. And she's just really bummed out. She's wearing one of those Mumford and Sons hats that Kyle Richards loves. And she's like, I have people in my life that think I'm fucking cool as hell. And Santa was like, I think you're fucking cool as hell, dude. I do. And she's like, thank you. Um, and she's like, I would, I would rather you live your truth um, totally than hide something from me ever. I wouldn't want you to be any other way. She's like, can we please come home? Can we please go home? He's like, yeah, let's get out of here. And I got to tell you, I remember that scene so specifically, and I thought it was the most beautiful scene. I really did. And that's why I really thought, oh man, they are the real deal. And for a time, they probably were the real deal. But that's like, that's it. Like I bought in. I thought it was so sensitive of him. I thought he just understood so well. And then we have more scenes of like him and the Tom Tom outfits, like blowing kisses at Ariana during like gay pride. And then we see Ariana crying at the opening and hugging Tom. We see Katie hugging Schwartz. And you just realize there is so many memories at this place. And that's why, like I said, this that's why this show is powerful. As much as we joke and laugh about it, it does have just this emotional resonance to it. Don't laugh at me when I say that, you 
okay, we come back, all the ladies are around the table, and they're like, yeah, it's all the bad bitches. And Lisa's like, oh, that's you ladies, not me. And Lola's like, you're the baddest bitch of them all. And we see Jesse Montana come over and say hey to Ariana. And Jesse Montana, our prayers, our good thoughts go out to him. Uh, he had, uh, uh, I think, a, a brain aneurysm or something like that. I, um, I hope everybody donated to him. I donated to him. Um, it, it was very sudden. Uh, I haven't heard an update. I hope he's doing great. He uh, has worked at Surf Forever. He was on the podcast a long time ago. A really nice guy. So he's saying hi to Ariana. And Schwartz, again, sneaks up. He's like, oh, hey, hey Jesse, what's going on? Uh, hey, Ariana. Uh, what's going on, Ariana? And Ariana just kind of ignores him. He's like, it's good to see you here. It really is. And um, Lala at this point said, hey, Lisa, can I, can I pull you for a second? Can I, can I have a chat with you? It's like, how are you, dear girl? Uh, I'm okay. I'm feeling, and Lala's like, I'm feeling a lot of different ways about like this Raquel situation, Lala says. And I'm like, oh shit, here we go. Here we go. After like taking a step back, she says, what Raquel said, you know, if basically, if I basically go against Tom, I don't have anybody. And we flash back to Rachel three months earlier. Which is like, I feel like Tom is the one person that I have. And I just like um, went and betrayed him. Then I really have nobody. And it's really, really dark watching that again. But it, Lala goes, what I can relate to is feeling isolated and feeling like the person who has made you feel like they're the only one. And, you know, at least like that's the last person. But if you go against them, you have nothing. I know what it's like to have a man in front of you, she says in a talking head, painting a beautiful picture saying, you're the one for me, you're my soulmate, and you see what your future could be with this person, uh, and you're willing to fucking risk it all, Lala says. So much so that I ignored everyone around me, telling me, girl, you're the other woman. Uh, it was quite surprised. Oh no, at least like it was quite surprising that she had the balls to go against him, really. And Lala's like, "No, I know," and like I know that feeling of like I'm going to tell the truth because that's what feels natural to me. And the hardest part about it is like in another talking head with Lala, she says, um, "You know, all the names that I was called, me being labeled a home wrecking whore. Like if you just lay it out there, they're all true." And she's crying in this scene with Lisa. Now, this is an interesting scene if you look from it from a production angle as well, because Lisa is kind of giving this under the table compliment to Rachel of like, I didn't know, dear clever girl, I didn't know she had the balls to do that. And at this moment, Ken, did you know, I can't believe that. No, I mean, so Lisa's giving her a compliment and, you know, Lala and Lisa are sitting there, you know, kind of talking, uh, you know, about Lala in a good way. And I thought this was also really powerful in Lala facing, you know, or being able to realize her own behavior in terms of Randall. Like Lala and like a lot of us, it takes years sometimes to process this, but the, the, we've all been in those relationships where you would say or do anything for that person. They make you feel like it's, you know, you guys against the world, like, you know, us against the world. And Randall made Lala feel like that. But I think that's really interesting that, you know, we saw those scenes on Vanderpump Rules where they did call her a home wrecking whore. And she's like, at the end of the day, that was all true. But the thing with Lala, though, is, you know, we've seen her fight tooth and nail saying, no, no, that's not true. It's not true at all. You don't know. You don't know. So it's hard, though, because it's hard to ever really fully trust Lala because she is so good at. I don't want to say lying because that's not what it is. She feels like she's lying for a reason, but she's really good and passionate about it where she will shout you down. She will out talk you. She'll, I mean, you know, we've seen her go off on Raquel all those times on episodes, but in this, she's actually saying, I kind of understand where Rachel is coming from. And then you start to see, wow, they really did think Rachel was coming back. They really did. And they were kind of laying the building blocks for potential scenes that Rachel could potentially have. She'd have one with Lisa. She'd have one with Lala. So they knew a way to utilize Rachel, even though Ariana was like, no. And that would have been really interesting to see um, because Ariana would have been put through hell, would have been victimized in a kind of a complete other way as well. I mean, it wouldn't have stopped them from doing it, but we would have seen that. Um, Lisa's like, I'm happy to see that you're not as like, you know, um, uh, you know, rigid in your position on her, Nicolaine. Uh, oh, um, 
She's like, out of all of them, Lala is actually the last person that I would expect to have empathy for Raquel, especially after their interactions. We see the 2018, you know, you're a Bambi-eyed bitch. 2019, uh, the reunion, when she's like, I wasn't your best friend, ho! And DJ James Kennedy was like, I was a kid! I was 25! <laughs> that was at the reunion. I mean, Lala went so hard at Rachel at the reunion, but now here we are three months later, and everything's like, yeah, it's okay. It's uh, I feel poor. So maybe if there's room for forgiveness from Lala, the others will come around. Who knows? So in the scene, she's like, maybe she could do with somebody to talk to, Lala. Oh, I love you. Lisa just being happy. I'm like, oh, we found a way to get her in a scene. All right. Yes. So we have this little scene. Oh, darling. Oh, goodbye. And she's like, have a lovely night, Lisa. I'll see you soon. Uh, okay, get out of here. Have a good night. And Lala kind of walks off. We don't know where she's walking off to, but we do see it's daylight still or like kind of, you know, dusk in the background, which is interesting because the next scene, it's dark out in the alleyway. DJ James Kennedy is performing for all of his fans. He's like, yes. All right, all right. And then we have Katie and Sheena talking and basically like, oh, this is fun. And um, Katie's like, I'm not really wanting to revisit anything of what happened last summer. I want to know that I can trust you with small things, Sheena. Like, I do like hanging out with you, but when I'm talking to you about what I'm doing, who I'm dating, that it's not going to be used against me. Because we did see that Sheena kind of did use that against, uh, you know, against her last season in regards with Schwartz. And Katie felt betrayed for that. And Sheena's like, I'm so sorry for that. It'll never happen. Uh, in a talking head, she said, last summer, I was completely ready to write off my relationship with Katie. I mean, especially after so many years of feeling like I've always uh, having to walk on eggshells around her. And we get flashbacks of Katie in 2013 saying, shut the fuck up. 2016 going, Sheena, you can't accept you fucked up. Uh, 2022, say the fuck out of my divorce. You're a troll. Oh, I'm a troll. She's like, but in putting our differences aside for Ariana, we realize we do still like each other. Sheena says. Plus, it's much easier to bond with Katie uh, now that we have a common enemy. And we don't have just one. We have two. Um, and Sheena's like, I do want to get back to where you know we were, but better. Because it's like, look at our two best friends. Like, I would love for the four of us, Lala and Ariana, to continue, you know, growing these friendships. And, you know, Katie's like, maybe we just do like a girl hang uh, tomorrow night. It's like, I'm free. And Katie's like, I'm always free. I do want to talk about the Katie-Sheena relationship because it is interesting. I mean, Sheena was on my podcast before all this blew up and talking about that Katie stuff. I mean, there's not been a lot of love lost over the years from them. And if you've watched this show, you've seen that and the, the Stasi of it all. And Sheena was an easy punching bag, you know, and I know they feel they feel right. You know, I, it's so hard, like personal relationships, everybody has their reasons at the end of the day. Nobody truly thinks they're being mean just to be mean, even though it comes off that way. Um, but it is good to see, you know, they're really wanting to try to make this work. You know, there's play in that. And that's kind of nice to see. So now we go into the back alley of Tom Tom. And like I said, this is a cold, unfeeling alley. It looks like a chemical plant of some sort. And then she's like, okay, Rachel, maybe I have her blocked. She's trying to find her. Okay. Okay. She's not blocked on my end now. Okay. What Raquel did, what she said, Lala says in a talking head, how she went about things was so fucking stupid. Um, and then we hear her leave a, a voice note. Hey, Raquel, um, I'm sure I'm like the last person uh, that uh, you expected to hear from. Um, I hope that you're doing okay. And uh, but as someone who knows what it's like, she says in the talking head to walk through life and see comments about being a mistress. Uh, I don't want her to wear that forever. And then the voicemail, she continues, I don't know if you're back in LA or not, but um, I'd like to have a conversation with you at some point. If you're open to that, um, so, uh, all right. Okay. All right. Uh, hope to talk to you soon. <laughs> Have a nice summer. And then she puts it and she's like, oh my God, she saw it. So we see that Rachel already has seen this voicemail. And I thought Rachel only got her phone, uh, at the facility once a day, but who knows at that point. And also I, I do wonder on Rachel's podcast, if we're going to hear this voice note that Lala left, because I would imagine she's able to play that since it was left for her, but who knows? Who knows if we will hear that? Um, let me know if she's already talked about it on the podcast. Um, but we see this and this is like a big, you know, because Ariana doesn't know that she was off doing this. Ariana is allegedly in Tom, Tom, right. You know, 30 feet away from her right now. 
And it's wild. And a lot of people are like, oh, she just did this. Like she had to do this for production and maybe, but I also want to believe that Lala actually has the strength of her convictions and she's doing this because she truly does feel this and not because she knows it's a good storyline for her. Um, but she's like, oh my God, I'm going to shit my pants. Oh my God. Oh my God. So she's nervous about this. We go back into the bar and there's just flashbacks of Sandoval. There's flashback of the mustache. And we see Ariana dancing in slow motion on the table. And you see a wall of fans like taking pictures. And we see like inner cuts of Ariana screaming at Tom. And it's really dark. And this is what pisses me out. This is what I saw that Facebook comment earlier. Of like, I can't believe she's dancing on the table. Like, dude, you, she's out there in a party environment. She's trying to actually have a good time there. Like, my God, everything she does now, she's an asshole for doing. I just don't understand that, uh, that way of thinking at all. Like, I just, I mean, come on. Wouldn't you do the same in some sense if you're out? You know, everybody's having a good time and you're currently, like, I don't know. Anyways, now we're back over at Schwartz's uh, plant house. And Katie's there. Katie knocks on the door. He's like, oh, what's up? Come on in. Um, Hey. And Gordo and Butters, their dog, she's picking him up. And she's like, I, he's like, I just gave him oatmeal baths. And I, pl- I, pl- I plucked his dingleberries today. I rewashed his little butt too. And I just kept thinking, I was like, when is the last time Schwartz has clipped his own dingleberries and washed his own little butt? You know, Katie says, after 12 years together, five of which we were married, uh, I'm happy to say that Schwartz is not my problem anymore. And that has got to be so freeing to think. And he's like, oh, I want to chill for a second. And Katie just says, uh, sure. It is just so unenthusiastic. It's like, uh, I guess I feel like I'm in hell, but I guess I'll do it. It's just, it's like you, it's like another window. You just almost have like a trigger and you're like, Oh God, it's like how they used to talk to each other. And we get a flashback of like Schwartz belittling her of like, you got to stop being so emotionally entitled. Um, then Katie forget, forbid me to make out with her. And it kind of felt like sticking it to the man when I made out with Raquel. And then another scene from last season where he's like, oh my God, I so do not miss Katie in any way, shape or form. And I got to say, like, we all know that's bullshit. Like people say that shit and like we know Schwartz didn't mean it, but he always talked about her so fucking negatively that it's like, I got to imagine like Katie's used to it by now because her life's on TV, but that's just like, damn, it's like just, Schwartz would just get to that point where he felt so comfortable with taking it over that line. And he's usually, you know, like, oh, woe is me. I'm a cute teddy bear. But then that's like just hurtful shit. And it's just, she's so used to it. Anyways, Katie's like, so the power dynamic shift is me saying no, you know, no. He's like, oh, did you have fun last night at Tom Tom? He was like, I was like reading the room, like feeling out the energy and like Ariana is just not happy with you. Maybe if it comes up and it feels right in the moment, like you can be like, you know, I know Schwartz would love to chat with you, but you know, like whenever you're ready, you know, I don't know. I don't know. And Katie's like, well, I just think maybe you should just text her and say, I would like to talk to you. Um, I think she blocked me. And he's like, okay, well then don't. Um, okay. No. Um, I just miss our little, whatever. Like I literally love Ariana, you know? Um, and Katie's like, well, she's a lot cooler than Tom Sandoval. That's for sure. Um, and I, it just, and then Schwartz is like, he's with the drill sergeant. He's going to boot camp right now. Um, I, it's just so crazy that he wants Ariana's forgiveness, but he should also be asking for Katie's forgiveness. This was done to Katie as well. Like the trio of them, Rachel and Rachel honestly seems to be the only person that seems to be truly mortified with all of this and actually took appropriate actions. But Schwartz and Sandoval and Rachel plotted against both of them. They kept this secret from Ariana, Schwartz and Sandoval and Rachel, but they also did this to Katie and they led Katie to believe that this, that Rachel was after Schwartz. Like they thought they were being so smart and sly. And that's the part that keeps getting let out there. They, they really tried to sell this narrative. They really did. And Schwartz like, oh, I'm just being a good friend. And Katie's like, well, I hope Tom Sandoval cries a lot at uh, his little boot camp. And Schwartz is like, I mean, he does. He cries a lot. He does. And Katie just gives a look like, oh, dude, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, now we show up at the den with all the girls for girls nights. And so they're all walking up, Sheena and Ariana, Katie and Lala. And this is a place right off Sunset, the den. And <laughs> they just all walk in. They're all like, oh, you look hot. No, you look hot. You look hot. Oh, my God. Oh, it's so warm. I got this. I grabbed the jacket. Da, 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 da. And they're ordering. And uh, yeah, I don't know why they cho- choose to leave orders in these shows. Like, 
Is it like, cause Lala it orders, orders food with like a lot of ranch. She's like, Oh my God, can we get sides of ranch to dip the fries in? I just want a ranch. That's Lala said it was like, shout out to Stassi queen of ranch. And then she was like, Oh my God, did you see my Amazon live? Or like Lala was like, did you see my Amazon live? And they're all just girl talking. And I'm just wondering this whole time, is this where Lala is going to tell Ariana about having reached out to uh, R- Rachel? Anyways, Katie says, hey, I saw Schwartz today and, um, you know, we got the pets. And then Schwartz, like, we find out shows Katie his bug collection. And we flash back to five hours earlier and Katie's face looks disgusted as he's pulling out bugs. He's like, look at him. And she's like, oh, I hate it. She's like, oh, do you want to hold him? And it's like these little beetle bugs. I don't know. And I will say, once again, this worries me because I don't know if you guys remember Dog, D-A-U-G. It was their, their lizard that lived less than one year and they did a funeral for dog. I always call it not jumping the shark, but jumping the dog. Uh, because that's when I thought, oh my God, this show is going downhill really fast. And I also don't know if Schwartz is in a position where you should have any kind of animals, reptiles, insects, anything like that. Anyways, so uh, that was interesting. And it just gave me really bad dog um, flashbacks. But then Katie's like, oh, anyways, Schwartz said he's missing you, Ariana. She's like, well, that's too bad. And then Lala goes, can I play devil's advocate for one moment? And Ariana's like, oh my God. In a talking head, she goes, the devil doesn't need any more advocates. And that's so true. Like even me, like I'm always like, like we don't need, like don't, the devil's, the, the, the devil's, there's a reason they're the devil. They don't need advocate. Like do not. We always don't need the other side of things. Sometimes there actually is just right and wrong. Uh, she's like, I do think Schwartz needs to like make some moves, Lala says, and change like the direction of his life. But like, you're also having to think about like, The amount of like mental abuse that Sandoval has inflicted upon him for many fucking years. It's the levels and the layers of unlearning that I've only just started. Ariana says, I want to get closer to Katie for like a long time. I wanted to get closer to Katie for a long time. And I was always hesitant because Tom Sandoval, Ariana says, would constantly be like, just be careful, dude. Just be careful. And Lala's like, well, do you feel like that's still happening? Because I feel like you have your guard up with me still. And this is very, this is a really interesting kind of, you know, because it says Tom really was in these people's ears, but also with the Schwartz thing of like Schwartz having to unlearn all of this patterns of behavior with Sandoval. Well, we know Schwartz didn't really unlearn anything because he's there with on the bio files. He's there with Sandoval still all the time. They're like back, back in business, but also Schwartz is a grown man. You know, he is a grown man in his forties that at this point, you know, he can say like, oh, I guess I'm just being pushed around, but he knows he isn't like he, or he, he doesn't care at the end of the day. He has autonomy of his own body. He can do what he wants. And I think that's what the point is that even Ariana's making. But now Lala says, I feel like you have your guard up uh, uh, with me. I can't tell if you like, like me, Lala says, and she starts tearing up. Um, I feel like you just tolerate me at times. And Ariana's like, what? Um, I like you. What are you talking about? I, I totally like you. And she's like, no, I just, uh, like, I know I can be like very, very intense, Ariana. Um, but I think behind closed doors, like I'm very sensitive and Ariana's like, we're very similar that way, but I just feel like I've been a dog in everyone's fight. And I really feel like I've just left to kind of defend myself a lot of the time. Uh, in a talking head, she says, Ariana has always been a tough one to crack. Uh, and I feel like that's been our biggest downfall. You know, I don't know how, how to have like a real friendship when someone shuts me out. And I mean, Lala's smart. Lala get like, and this is the thing too, is like, dude, Lala has like said so much. This is where Lala's like kind of serpent tongue will get her into trouble because she's talked so much smack about Ariana on this show. And even in interviews and things like that, where it's like, why wouldn't she have her guard up around you? Like, why wouldn't she? Like you have to understand. So like, it's interesting though, because you do know that Lala is extremely sensitive, but at the same time, she puts herself in these situations a lot of the times. And she then can like talk about it in a very like intrinsic, like a very smart fashion. But it's like, you still did these things where people might not trust you. I mean, you even like hooked up with Ariana a little bit in the backseat of that, that 
the truck or whatever that Sandoval was driving around in. And then you still went on to make fun of her and like talk down about her. So of course she has her guard up anyways. Ariana's like, well, I'm sorry that I didn't trust your judgment. And she like, I do think you guys need like a you moment, like you and Lala. And she is always just standing up for everybody. Um, and she's like, well, I don't want you to feel like that, babe. I don't want you. And she hugs Lala. I want us to like inner circle our asses now, Ariana says, which is just so wild because this is the person that went and left a voice note for Rachel. So Ariana's like, you know what? I do trust you. I do. Let's just be an inner circle. Let's be here for each other. And I just think it's like such a wild moment because of the moment that comes next. And she's like, okay, well, with the moment that we just had, Ariana, like, I feel like I need to be very, very honest with you. And she's like, yeah, well, like the last five minutes of the Raquel thing, there was one thing that she said in that, which was like, if I don't basically follow what Tom has told me and Ariana's shaking her head, like, yep, uh-huh. well, I don't feel like I'm going to have anybody. I was like, I am feeling like, um, I don't want her to wear this for the rest of her life. And Ariana's just staring. So I want you to know, and Ariana's shaking her head, yeah. Um, I sent her a message last night. And Katie, by the way, look at Katie putting a fry in her mouth and her face is like, oh, shit. No, she did. Oh, my God. It was like us, the viewer. Like, Katie was like, no. And Ariana, you just like, wait, what? Like, retro record shots? Like, Herp, what? What did you do? And I think even I was like, whoa, because that's dark after she's saying, why don't you trust me? Why don't you let me in? Are you, do you just tolerate me? And then she says she does this. And we come back from commercial and Ariana is just staring at Lala and everybody's staring at them. And Ariana's like text or like a voice and Lala's like a voice note. And Ariana talking to said, it's kind of wild if you think about it, because for maybe a year and a half, if anybody interacted with Lala's ex, Randall, she was ready to like murder him, cut his balls off, fuck you. And we flash back to that. When I hear people are going and communicating with that person, Lala says, I don't want you in my circle. Well, Ariana goes, I just feel like if the shoe were on the other foot and I was reaching out to Randall's mistress, I don't think Lala would be very happy with me. And in the scene, she goes, my feeling is that whatever work she's doing, Ariana says, I hope the best for her, you know, over there. But she's still doing the same stuff. She's still in contact with him and they're sending packages back and forth to each other. Wouldn't it be great if they're actually just drug, drug mules? Like, it's just like just uncut cocaine being sent back and forth. Anyways, Ariana's like, I know they're still in com communication. And Lala goes, but, but hear me out. We're talking about my ex, ex asked me to sign an NDA. And Katie's like, but Lala, your ex does not, it doesn't always apply. And Ariana goes, she knew better. And Lala goes, right. And I think that really, and Ariana goes, she literally came over my house one time when I was crying. That was like maybe January. And it was very clear that Tom and I were still together and she was there consoling me. And our Lala is like, what she did to Ariana is fucked up. But at the same time, at what point do I sit there and go like, I know this feeling. I know this feeling. And Katie's like, what she's saying is the feeling is the same, but I'm just saying the people are different. The players are different. And Lala goes, no, she was like, you know, you guys, and they're all kind of just, Sheena is trying to jump in now. And it's just a little bit of my, I mean, she, Sheena's like, right. I brought you into this loop. Let's not forget about that. And, you know, Sheen is now saying like, I brought her into this loop. I, I, I brought Rachel and what she did to me. You don't forget about that. And Lala's like, no, I would never forget about that. And she's like, okay. And in a talking head, she's like, I feel like it was, it's the only thing Raquel did wrong was fall in love with her best friend, Sandoval, that one day maybe we could still have been friends, but that is not the only wrong thing that she did. But the bitch put a temporary restraining order out on me and that has changed everything. She's like, my nails, I can't make a fist. Ariana's like, for me, I worry that there are certain people in the world that look at those types of conversations as like a foot in the door. And, you know, there is no foot to be had here, Ariana says. And Lala's like, I want you to know I am in your corner, Lala says. I don't want to upset you because I really do. And she's like, no, no, I trust me. I'm not. And Lala goes, are you seeing me right now? Are you seeing me? And Ari's like, yeah, yeah. I love you. I love you too. And they smile. And Lala's like, this was like a very good girls night. I'm like, was it? Oh my God. Oh my God. I feel like so awkward. Um, and then they all cheers. But that is the thing is that that foot in the door, that's what you got to worry about. Right. Ariana's right. Like I do know. And at that point she doesn't know Rachel's intentions. She doesn't know Rachel, like for all they know, like Rachel's completely in love with Tom. She, she doesn't know Rachel's state of mind. Nobody did at that point. I think production or probably Alex Baskin was in touch with Rachel and her mom. 
But at this point, it was this big question mark. Not everybody knew where she was at. Uh, I just think it is interesting that, uh, you know, I think if anything, Ariana probably walked away from filming of like, yep, uh, we're filming a new season again. And now we go to the last scene where a car pulls up to Tom and Ariana's house. And guess what? Tom Thanabal walks out. We, he finally, he put, he puts his keys in the door. He didn't forget them like that time he forgot his keys and then had sex with Rachel in the front. No, not this time. He has his keys. He walks into a very empty house, just very symbolic, just all alone. And he's like, hello, what's up? And he pulls his suitcase up the stairs. And that's where we end this episode. We are back, baby. We did it. And then we have this season on Vanderpump Rules where a bunch of crazy stuff happens. What did you guys think? Remember, temper your expectations. It's going to start small, but like it is fascinating. And then if you throw these numb nuts podcasts on top of it, you're like, oh God, the darkness, the sickness, the mental uh, gymnastics that we're going to have to do this season. I hope you will stay with this podcast and join us all season long as I drive myself insane trying to figure out the mystery of why we're all douchebags. <laughs> I hope you had some laughs today. And don't worry, this is part one. Part two, I'm going to be talking about Nick Vile's podcast with Sandoval and Schwartz. So join me on part two. Make sure you're subscribed. I know I release way too much content, but I truly love what I do. Um, I think I love what I do. No, I do love what I do. And I'm really lucky to be doing it. And thank you guys for uh, joining me today for this Vanderpump Rules Season 11, Episode 1. And uh, click on over for Part 2 now for the Nick Vile Podcast. Bye, you guys. What's up? Guys, night.